Now let's stand by for the start of the 1976 VFL Grand Final. Umpires are Kevin Smith and Bill Della. Almost 120,000 here, perfect conditions and the ground in magnificent nick. This is the one that counts. A million positional changes. Here it is, the start of the 1976 VFL Grand Final. The opening bounce will favour Keenan. Gets the first tap out. Chance for Keith Gregg, taken away by Kelvin Matthews, who goes down to a solid hip and shoulder from Terry Moore, who is at centre-half forward for North Melbourne. Now we'll start to pick up the positional changes. Sutton is definitely on the back line. Croswell is 19th on the bench. And He's running around the... another change. Croswell is on the bench and running around behind the goals, and the first free kick of the match goes to Mick Nolan, the giant North Melbourne ruckman. Blight is on the back line. Up towards the full forward line, Cowton dropping back, a mark, will it be paid? There are the two reserves, Henshaw and Croswell, and this is Melrose giving the ball back to Peter Keenan, and he'll have the first shot at goal for North Melbourne. Croswell and Henshaw are the 19th and 20th, which means Chisnell is on the ground. And Peter Keenan from 40 metres out, kicking to the Jollymont end of the ground, will have the first shot at goal. Under a minute's play gone, and he badly missed kicks right across the side of his boot, and no score. Out of bounds on the full from a very fired up Peter Keenan in the first minute of play, and scores still level, nil all. And it will be from defence, Brian Dooge to put Hawthorne into attack from the back pocket. Now this time it's uh, Ian Bremner, Peter, right across there in the back pocket, back towards half-back flank. Knights went high, on the ground, Barry Cable played... Probably the best game that he has for North Melbourne last week in that critical preliminary final. And as a free kick will be taken by Michael Tuck. Just wide of uh, centre-half back position. Two minutes of play, no score yet. North have had the only opportunity so far. Tuck towards centre-half forward looking for Scott. He couldn't take the mark. Down it goes to Ablett. Ablett who kicked three goals a few weeks ago. And he's found John Henry. who let out well in front of Gumbleton. John Byrne was his opponent on that occasion. And Henry... Only a matter of 35, 40 metres out in the angle. Won't worry him too much. He has the south easterly breeze coming over his left shoulder. Lines up the spiral torpedo kick. And that's the first score of the game. An inaccurate one from Hendry. And that's a behind. Hawthorne, one point. North Melbourne yet to score. Serge Silvani. Both those kicks for go were goal were pretty sloppy. I think the wind's a, a sharp crosswind across the face of the goals. And they're finding a, their range a little bit difficult. Dent with a long kick out and a clever mark taken there by Chisnell, who is on the ground uh, in North Melbourne's 11th hour decision with the reserves up towards the wing position to Stephen Ick. Ick playing on the half forward line across the shoulder to, uh, to Brian Douge. And Douge kicks it from the half back. That's Peter Knights. A lot of blonde-headed players on the Hawthorne side, and they're really fired up. Down towards Hawthorne's half-forward line. Striding into it there was Ablett, winning it all over, uh, like a rash, and Ablett gets that free kick for a push in the back. Malcolm Blight is at centre-half back on Alan Martello. Interesting change, and there goes Ablett's kick. It's going close to the boundary line, and now it's across with a, a quick rush there by two players, forwards and backmen alike. It'll be interesting to pick up the changes uh, uh, as they do settle down in the first five minutes or so of this of this game as Nolan gets a good tap away to Greg. He's pulled down. It's fast and furious and grand final nerves will certainly be predominant in the early moments of this game uh, until the players settle down in front of this really jam-packed crowd at the MCG for the 1976 VFL final. And it's Keith Gregg to take the kick and it's his first one. He quickly swings play across towards Byrne in the goal square. He has a look. Puts his foot down, goes across the back line now towards Malcolm Blight. North Melbourne setting up that loose man, a beautiful pass, and they come forward to the wing to Schimmelbush. Back towards Blight, the champion player this fellow. So too was the man with the ball in Schimmelbush. But they're wasting time and fiddling. Schimmelbush caught on the wing. Hawthorne coming quickly to attack. Rolling towards the half-back line, grabbed now by, uh, by Polkinghorne. A kick towards the forward line and a mark again to Henry, who's too quick for John Byrne. Moncrief is in the forward pocket, David Dench on him. That pass was meant for Moncrief, but uh, Keith Gregg chipped in, took the mark, and there'll be a 15-metre penalty against Lee Matthews, which will bring Gregg up to uh, behind the edge of the centre square, almost up to the outer wing. Long kick from Gregg into the breeze, down to the full forward line, the half forward line at least, looking for Stephen Ick, who did such a great job in defence last week on David Mackay in the preliminary final. But he is on the forward line. Sutton is back on the half-back line on... Uh, 
Kelvin Matthews. Byrne has gone to full back on John Hendry. Gumbledon in the back pocket on Don Scott. So plenty of moves have been made. Back down towards the half forward line. A great attempt at a mark by Sutton, but it's taken away by Martello for Hawthorne. Down to the full forward line. Moncrief from behind used his body unfairly. Clay on is the call. Moncrief had a shot at goal. And he missed it. He missed it. It could almost have been a free kick against Moncrief for shepherding when the ball was uh, beyond the regulation distance. The play was allowed to go on and a bad attempt at goal by Moncrief, not under a great deal of pressure, missed blatantly through four a behind. And that's the only score so far for Hawthorne. Two behinds, North have yet to score. Nolan taking the ball from the kick in, running towards the boundary line, handballed over the boundary line, either holding the ball or deliberately and the free kick will go to Hawthorne. Well, taken by Jeff Abbott, there's Laurie Dwyer, the North Melbourne runner, former champion wingman. In the, there with the orange tracksuit top. Jeff Ablett towards uh, the full forward zone. A nice kick looking for Scott again. Scott in front of the pack. The ball running loose. Chance for Lee Matthews. Screws through Hawthorne. First goal. After five and a half minutes of play, the first goal on the board to Lee Matthews. One goal, two. One goal, two. Eight points, Hawthorne. North Melbourne yet to score. And that's uh, North Melbourne's danger man, uh, Matthews. And it looks as if they got Greg trying to tag him. And uh, he was able to slip away nicely, as he, he does regularly. Rollings has gone to the half-forward line. Surge being minded now by Darrell Sutton. Burns is in the centre, and Schimmelbush has gone on to Weed on the outer wing. Hard to pick up where Feltham is at the moment. A knock down towards Ablett, who ran into that ball very well. Onto his left boot, up towards full forward position. Moncrief again. Clever play. Mike Moncrief. Now, he's kicked 94 goals for the season. The second top goal kicker in the VFL. And now he's playing in the forward pocket. Has been over the last few games for Hawthorne because he lost uh, confidence, I believe, in the last few games. But Hawthorne, with all the scores on the board at this stage, and Moncrief with the breeze, 40 metres out. Shocking kick for Moncrief. Uh, yet to pick up his confidence. It's bending back, but it's not on. Gumbled in there. Gove was there. Malcolm Blight is a hero. He blazes away, but the free kick's gone over the shoulder. It'll be taken by Alan Goad. Now, Goad, uh, an incredible player, and probably was Hawthorne's best 19th man for last season, uh, sitting and warming the bench for many, many times. He came on to be one of their permanent members this year until the last few games where he fell out of favour again, was on the bench. But he's a big occasion player, and what bigger occasion can you have than this the grand final? From point-blank range. Didn't miss. A roar. Players run back to the centre. And if anything, I must say that Hawthorne have picked up their confidence quicker than North Melbourne. Yes, the... uh, Hawthorne moving very well. Good opening. And they're getting a lot of drive from Ablett on this wing, who's uh, getting away uh, pretty easily from uh, Chisholm. He's had four kicks to the stage already. Back at midfield. And it is an interesting move of Keith Grigg. He is standing shoulder to shoulder with Lee Matthews there. And... Uh, Matthews is standing shoulder to shoulder with Barry Cable, so there's a lot of minding going on, and while all this is happening, it'll be Nolan to run up the ball, and Jones running the same way. Nolan the tap down, taken away by Burns, runs from the centre and boots long up to the half-forward line, Douge out of the back pocket, and Bremner missed by Calvin, streaming back there was Knights, hit towards the boundary line by Brian Douge, who picks it up and blazes away badly, out of bounds on the full by Douge, and the free kick to go to North Melbourne on the half-forward line to be taken by Peter Chisholm on the members' side of the ground. I wonder what Sergio thinks about the move of perhaps having a champion like Keith Gregg tailing another champion. Surely this is limiting his uh, great Yes, I, I think uh, North will lose by this move. I, I think they need uh, Gregg as a free agent rather than uh, having a job to do. Good kick by Chisholm. Cowton went up. Cable, this is dangerous. Picks up, snaps a goal. It's close. It's through for goal. Greg was uh, looking after Lee Matthews. Matthews forgot about Barry Cable momentarily, and he didn't make any mistake with his uh, first deliberate snapshot at goal from 20 metres out. Quick as a flash, he read where the ball would be at the right time and has scored the Kangaroos' first goal. Hawthorne 2 2 14, North 1 goal straight, and Serge Barry Cable is following on from where he left off last yes, week. Yes, uh, well, here's the inspiration that uh, North had last week, and he started off well, getting that ball to get him back into this game at this stage. Kevin Smith there with the bounce, and that's an infringement in the square. Teams are only allowed five players at any one time from the centre bounce. Four players, and that was the fifth player encroaching over that mark. North Melbourne's free kick up to centre half forward. Michael Tuck sends them back over towards centre wing outer side. That's uh, 
O'Halloran, is it, over there, number eight? No, no, it's Moncrief, who seems to have switched flanks now. And David Dench is on him. And the free kick is against Moncrief. Against uh, Lee Matthews, at least. The free kick will go to David Dench. Tackle too high there, a little crude, and it was picked up by the second umpire. Dench right on centre wing after 10 minutes of play, first term of the grand final. Towards centre half forward, lovely long kick, looking for Moore, knocked away from him. Ball running free, Barry Rollings tries to move in on it. So too does Melrose. Bernie Jones tagging him just a little too closely. And clever play by uh, Graham Melrose earns him the free kick. Hawthorne are changing their Ruck Rovers on the half-back line on the North Ruck Rovers. Melrose goes for the short pass. It was a bad one. Kicked away by Lee Matthews. Back towards the half-forward line. And uh, did Matthews go down after play? Yes, At the did. hands of Gary Cowton. And there'll be a free kick downfield. And it'll be taken by Moncrief, who's figuring very prominently in the early play. A lovely kick towards Don Scott in front. Scott, a lot of strength there. Taken away. Kicked back by Daryl Sutton. And the free kick has gone against Sutton. Now against Don Scott for a hit after the play. It should be a relayed one up the ground, David. Scotty very fired up, as uh, he always is for North Melbourne. He gave away that free kick then, and the kick will go up towards the centre wing. It was kicked up, but play will go back, and it will be Keith Gregg to take the kick. So a rather foolish free kick against Don Scott, but he plays for his team, and it wouldn't worry him in the slightest. Well, there goes Gregg kicking into the breeze. As you can see, it's been held up somewhat. Knight's waiting at the back. Taken quickly by Cable for his second, but a ricochet hit the pack. Grabbed by Cable again in the second. Knight and straight through. That was a champion's approach. You've just seen it with Barry Cable. The kick into the pack was smothered. He pounced on it like a cat on the mounts. The recovery was superb, and he drove it straight through the centre. So that's North's answer to Hawthorne. There's only two points of difference at the 10-minute mark in this first term. Hawthorne 2-2, North Melbourne 2, and Barassi's happy. And that superstar roving from Cable missed the first kick. But had a block was like a cat when he twisted and got his got through the Hawthorne defence quite easily. And another goal to Cable. That is right. Matthews is shadowing uh, Cable, and Greg is shadowing Matthews from the bounce. Good tap from Nolan down to Cable out wide to Dawson. Tuck got there and spoiled. Good play by Michael Tuck, who's a most underrated ruck rover. And a good smother by Dawson. But unfortunately, uh, Hawthorne, as far as North are concerned, through that smother will clear. Brian Dews on the outer side. Burns and Melrose up high to knock away. Feltham feeds the ball across the cable again. And a beautiful pass was meant for Terry Moore. Intercepted. Moore got it. Handball on the way past. A chance for a shot at goal by Stephen Ick from 30 metres out. And he's missed it. But North now starting to apply tremendous pressure for the last four or five minutes. We've played 12 minutes in this first term. North have kept the ball on their forward line, testing out the Hawthorne defence. The first Fit deliberate shot at goal by Stephen Hick was a minor one. Fitting quickly into their handball pattern of play, North have. Usually it's uh, very scrambly at the start of the grand final, but they've got into their pattern very quickly. Remnant to the outer side. Scott got a hand to it out there with Keenan, chasing after the ball, picked up by the brilliant Knights, second in the Brownlow medal this year after missing seven matches. Sutton was well tackled, and it will go against him. A good tackle, a solid one by Kelvin Matthews, but maybe he was a little stiff. Uh, in that decision for holding the ball. And Kelvin Matthews to take it from inside the centre square. Point the difference after 13 minutes of play. And the kick towards centre half forward. Only one man flying for the ball was John Henry and it wasn't paid and neither it should have been because he didn't uh, grab that mark uh, fairly. Lee Matthews, the kick forward and that's Moncrief again. Mike Moncrief, uh, a lucky kick really, or a lucky mark because it was a bad kick, wasn't it, from uh, Lee Matthews that only travelled about 20 metres. I'm certain it was uh, an attack on goal by Matthews, but fortunately, Moncrief was there. Now, Moncrief, as Jeff has already said, 94 goals this season. The top VFL goal scorer was Larry Donoghue of uh, Geelong with 105. Directly in front, Moncrief. He's made no mistake this time. So it's one goal, one to him. And Hawthorne moved to 3-2. That's 20. North Melbourne at 2-1, 13. So that's five goals in just under 14 minutes in the first term. Very high scoring for a grand final, and uh, Moncrief uh, having, causing a lot of bother to Dench, moving way up the ground. He's playing up from the wing and uh, right across the ground, and Dench can't seem to handle him at this stage. It's a bit like Peter Keenan, Serge, with a, a licence to roam wherever he wants to today. Uh, and maybe the big ground suits him too, and it is big. It's cut and cropped very closely. And full credit to uh, the MCC curator in Bill Watt. Probably one of his best efforts this season. Jeff, an interesting move, fell from down in the back pocket, minding the resting Hawthorne Rovers, Godin Matthews. He's a bit of a stopper, and he's a great demand for concentration, Graham, uh, is Paul Feltham, and a great experience uh, backing him up as well. There's a good bounce, Scott in front, and he's pushed out of the way by Keenan, and Scott picks up his first free kick for the match. Can't do anything, this fellow, playing his 200th VFL game for Dave. What a day to play on a grand final day. 
It's built Marcus, bad news for Hendry. Hawthorne recover through Martello. Martello down quickly towards Moncrief. Moncrief lumbering after it. Gets into it again. Hawthorne uh, right in it. North Melbourne waiting for the pounce. The handball quickly across towards uh, Goad. It's Matthews, rather, who's kicked one already. An ill-directed kick goes past Henry, and he's almost bundled over. Gets a tackle a little bit high, and he'll get the free kick. But he's a long way from goal. But let's remember what a long kicker of the football John Henry uh, is. A good 60 metres out. The breeze behind him, and there it goes. The wind's caught it. It's going very close. It's gone through for one point only. So it's... Uh, the second behind that Henry's kick to take him uh, as Hawthorne scored a three goals three. North Melbourne on 2 1. It's built up now for an enormous game at this grand final, halfway through the first term. Out towards Chisnell and Ablett will have a great duel. Chisnell did well and fell from there, pushing the ball along. Scott and Keenan again behind the plus. Oh, and did you like? Oh, and another one. Oh, Peter Keenan, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> well, well, well. And was take. that oh. seen by the umpire? It was for a free kick, but no report. Oh, Peter Keenan. Well, that rumour would have been true that we heard in the oh, dressing room. Dead set true. While play was going on, Peter Keenan was having the time of his life. And watch them again. Oh. Here they go. Pushing and shoving, and now umpire Kevin Smith will come in. Oh. And it's no use talking to one of them. It's got to be none or both, I think, as far as that's concerned. <laughs> Although Keenan definitely started that one. And from the half-back line, the resultant free kick after that out-of-bounds on the full kick will go to Keith Gregg. Well, Keenan and Scott will have to watch them as well, and it's put in their direction. Up at the back was Terry Moore, knock loose, hit towards the boundary oh. line, and they go down again. Keenan collected one on the back of the head. Scott is there. Maybe not the back of the head. He was holding the back of his head, but it could have been a little square around, and he wants to go on with it, Peter Keenan. No, he's going to get the free kick. Well... What a sensational start. The rumours we heard about uh, Keenan watching Don Scott are certainly true. No free kick and the ball will go back to being out of bounds. Well, Scott and Keenan in the ruck battle again. Keep our eyes on them. It was Keenan who got it away, but to Knights. And Knights up towards centre-half forward to Moncrief again. Knocked away from him, taken by Daryl Sutton. Tagged by Kelvin Matthews. Didn't have the ball. John Byrne hand passing to Malcolm Blight. And Blight through centre. Directs play across to the outer side of the ground now. Towards centre half four, the ball swinging back. Oh, and the and runner. It's on behind uh, play, and the runner is involved here. Well, might Hawthorne pick them up in just a moment. <laughs> play going on to Rodney Eid over there on the uh, outer wing, so play really livening up now. Chance for uh, Bernie Jones, but he overran that ball and uh, ricochets out of play. All interest really in the, the temper that's uh, being shown behind play at present rather than, than in the action. Peter Chisholm and the Hawthorne runner wrestling on the ground, which is a most unusual sight with an official. After all, it is a grand final, and I think anything goes in the grand final. I'm sure Serge Silvani will back up uh, that statement. <laughs> oh, I had a few, a little bit more ethics than you, uh, Jeff. <laughs> the tap out by Keenan, who's doing well on the ruck to Henry, who's paddling the ball along in front of him, and it's a very uh, waxy, greasy ball early in the game, as you can see the polish on it, and Henry going back for a free kick. It was a rumour that uh, John Henry had trodden on a rusty nail during the week and was hobbling about, and that's been kept rather secret, but he looks as though he's very fleet of foot so far in the match. Henry, another 50 metres out with a long, beautiful left foot, driving kick straight through the centre. That's a classic goal from Henry. That's his first, and what a percentage builder it is for Hawthorne at this stage to lift them out of four goals three, approaching the 20-minute mark as Henry comes back, very pleased with himself. North Melbourne on 2-1. So Hawthorne a double North score at this time. And have doubled the free kicks. 11 to Hawthorne, 5 to North. Both the Hawthorne key forwards, Henry and Moncrief, doing very, very well at this stage of the game. Well, we're waiting for the ball to be brought back to the centre of the ground to restart play. Checking the time. 19 and a half minutes gone in this first term. Plenty of fireworks, a lot of high scoring. Keenan going off the ball, back up to the forward pocket, and Kelvin Moore moving out to uh, mind him. Now there's another centre square infringement this time. North Melbourne with more than the regulation four players, and the kick to go in the centre of the ground to Alan Goat of Hawthorne. Hawthorne 4-3, North 2-1, down to the forward line, knocked on, a chance now for Burns, who lost it to a tackle, a good one. Chance for Ablett, Ablett trying to burrow his way through, picked it up, good play by Jeff Ablett. Lines up from 40 metres out with a left foot snap at goal. He's scored, but a behind only. And that's the danger as far as uh, the North wingman Chisnell was concerned, that Ablett has this ability to drop down from the wing, 
In fact, he uh, kicked four goals in the second semi-final against Carlton and was one of their best players from the wing. This time he scored only a behind. David Dench virtually going straight down the centre. And what a lovely kick. It's almost travelling towards the centre. And the mark over, uh, has been taken over there. And it is... Terry Moore. Terry Moore, down. yeah. yeah. Well, it's certainly plenty of changes because Terry Moore was a permanent back pocket player in that second semi-final. Towards centre half forward, and the mark has been taken there by Graham Milrose. And Milrose almost within scoring distance, probably 45, 50 metres out. But remember that uh, North Melbourne chose to kick into this slight south-easterly breeze. Kick by Milrose is a good one. It might make the distance. It has. And that's North Melbourne's third goal. First goal to Graham Melrose, that's three goals, one. Hawthorne are four goals, four. That's North Melbourne, 19 points to 28 after 20 minutes of play first term. That's seven goals in 20 minutes. A very good answering goal by Melrose and a deadly kick from that range, <laughs> kicking into a, a, a wind and uh, Hawthorne opening up a little bit of a break at that stage with a two goals, three advantage and uh, North Melbourne are hanging on against this wind and doing it well. Cable in the, in the ruck at the moment. The, the tap out comes quickly towards John Burns. North Melbourne centre player up towards the half forward line. A good bit of shepherding from Tom Blight to allow teammate uh, Moore to get in the act there. And Stephen Ick, rather. Ick's long driving kick towards the goal square, but Hawthorne in the front of the Moore. Grimmer fighting his way there. Number one is Keenan, who's really been dishing it out with uh, Don Scott of Hawthorne. And it will be a ball up. At the 20 minute mark in this fiery first quarter of the grand final. A tap out by Bernie Jones for Hawthorne. Quickly down towards uh, Alan Go. He puts it down towards his feet and gets a free kick for in the back or for holding and go in the back pocket now to drive Hawthorne hopefully into attack. Long kicking uh, by both sides so far to Martello. Three North Melbourne defenders make sure he doesn't get it. Burns puts a tap on Barry Rowlings who threads his way through the back. An army there of uh, players and stripes, vertical stripes on both sides. This North Melbourne in the dark shorts. John Burns again for North Melbourne drives him up towards full forward. No one able to take that one. Picked up quickly by Douge. Do just kick towards uh, Ablett. Ablett's very quick on this wing, uh, too fast for Chisnell. Goad across towards uh, Rollings. Down towards the centre position now to Henry. Knocked away by John Byrne. Henry quick, like a cat on the mouse. A long piece of handball, but the man in front is David Denton. He'll stride out. He's too quick for Moncrief. A clever piece of handball to teammate John Byrne. He goes across the centre of the ground now, looking for a lead on the half-forward flank on the outer side. Players are jammed up on that half-forward flank. This is Polkinghorn grabbing the ball from them. Onto his boot quickly. Back to the centre, but it's a difficult one. It's straight up in the air. Courageous men needed at the moment. Had Smeltham with it. Up towards full forward. And Mark! <laughs> Clever play by Gary Cowton, who gets the wobbles at times, but nevertheless he's effective. And North Melbourne at this stage are 3-1 to Hawthorne's 4-4. So it's 1-3 the difference. It's nine points with Cowton only 20 metres out and uh, kicking into a slight breeze, but it shouldn't worry him from that position. He's taking plenty of time, and so he should. There it goes. Left the boot well. His first goal. North's fourth goal. And it's only three points of difference. It's going to be a very close game surge. Yes, uh, Hawthorne, I think, hoping for an early advantage uh, but, uh, with their two key forwards playing very well at this stage. And North have come back in the last two or three minutes and, uh, oh, they're looking very good. Three points in it, 4-4 four, four to 4-1. Four, and we're two minutes off entering time on in this first quarter. That's 23 minutes of play gone. Great conditions, a capacity crowd. There could be 115,000 here today in the ground in beautiful condition. Nolan's on the ball, it will favour him, taps it straight to Keith Gregg. Gregg lost it to a tackle from Matthews, regains it, he'll be shepherded, but he fell over. Forced it towards John Burns, Burns now breaking away defensively from the centre, boots up to half forward, Ick and Knights. It's not loose, who's waiting down for it? Melrose was in there, so was Dawson. Coming in to read it well was Tuck, and out wide he goes to Barry Rollings. Beautiful left foot pass down to the forward line, and hit Henry on the chest again. And he's a couple of metres to spare in front of John Byrne. And now, importantly for Hawthorne, a 15-metre penalty, 15. which will bring him well within kicking distance, and that's closer to 30 metres than 15. That's his fifth mark, too, uh, I believe, Graham. Well, he's kicked so far. One goal, two. He's 45 metres out. Lines up another big spiral torpedo punt kick. Flying high at the back was Moncrief, but the ball drifted across the face of goal and threw from behind, and Henry's kicked one goal, three, and it's noticeable that he's getting a lot more rain in this grand final than Brent Croswell gave him at this corresponding time last year. Now we're a 
approaching time on in the first term. David Dench kicks out and favours the outer side. Looking for Terry Moore, and Moore was interfered with there. Badly by Martello, and Terry Moore takes the free kick. Former South Australian champion, called on there by umpire Kevin Smith. Out wide, and a good mark by Schimmelbush, who's been quiet in this first term. A brilliant player on his day. Lovely half-forward flanker towards centre half-forward. Looking for Cowton again. The Bremner's there, trying for the mark. Off hands. Chance there for Stephen Nick, number 36. Pounces back on the ball. Out comes Cable. Like grease lightning, but the free kick had gone prior to that. It will be taken by Ick, who was impeded there as, as he was uh, leaping after that ball. Now, Stephen Ick, a chance to score here. North Melbourne at four goals. So are Hawthorne. Lovely kick by Stephen Ick, coming right into the square. Keenan flying high from behind. It's off hands. And that gives North Melbourne their second behind. That's 4 2 26. Only three points behind Hawthorne. 4 5 29. Into time on now as the short kick comes out from Kelvin Moore and the mark taken by Michael Tuck. What a great player is Michael Tuck. He's long and lean and he's always there. Long kick too, up towards the wing. That was Feltham's arm got in the way there. The brilliant John Burns gets it. He loves these grand finals. Played so well here last year in this corresponding game. Up towards Dawson. He's not finishing off the season well. Here he goes. He's a champ. It's Peter Knights. A long dash, a long kick to Rollings in the middle and he'll put his foot on the gas. He looks for Moncrief, who's drifted away again into that pocket. A clever mark, Moncrief, and a free kick too, if you like. And down he goes. What a great game Moncrief's playing in this GF of 1976. It's hard to say where he's playing, at, either at full forward or in the forward pocket. I don't think it matters because he's covering so much ground and he's really put a question mark over the head of uh, North Melbourne backman as to what to do with him. That's his Grand third final mark. it is for 1976. Into the time on period, and that's his third mark. 50 metres out, a positive kick, straight towards goal, straight through. Mike Montford's second goal, he's heading towards the tongue, 100. That takes him to 96 for the year, and I guess that's another highlight in the game, whether he can reach 100 goals for the season. There's Larry Donahue of Geelong did. One of Montreux's problems has been his kicking. Once he starts kicking bad, he has a bad day. Well, he's putting the writing on the wall here today. He's kicked two early in the quarter, getting a lot of kicks, and uh, he could kick a bag of goals today if Brass doesn't make some sort of move to clamp him down. Dents just can't seem to tag him. 5-5 five, five to 4-2. Back at midfield, Nolan the tap. Lee Matthews sharked it. Kicked down to the forward line again. Hendry from the side. Byrne missed the mark. It's loose. Backing back onto his Dench, who appeared to be held without the ball. But according to umpire Bill Deller, it was pinned to him, and there'll be a ball up at centre-half forward with Hawthorne into attack. Just over 27 minutes gone on this uh, fiery first term. A couple of incidents to keep the crowd happy. Martello missed an easy one. That's good handball from Byrne, but put Vlight under pressure. Crude, Don Scott, very crude. And again, it was seen by the umpire. It was across the face, and if it was seen, it must be a reportable offence. That is weak umpiring. And Malcolm Blight will get the free kick. If it was seen, surely it was reportable if it was a hit across the face, and it was. You can see the red already on Malcolm Blight's uh, left cheek. He'll go up now almost to the centre of the ground to take this kick. Blight putting North Melbourne deep into attack, a monstrous kick, looking for Keenan, who's dropping back, but Kelvin Moore judging the flight of the ball perfectly. The mark was not paid, big pack converging on it. Stephen Nick emerging from that pack, but umpire Smith had whistled up play at the 28-minute mark. Only about two minutes of play gone normally, uh, to go at least. Normally a 30-minute quarter can be expected. Kevin Smith here, there certainly hasn't been a lot of hold-up in play. Bernie Jones gets the tap away. Cowton on the bottom of that pack, and umpire Smith moving in, but he's called for the bounce again. Now we're only about 30 metres out from the North Melbourne goal. And Hawthorne leading by nine, 11 points, 9 points. Knocked away. Hawthorne defending grimly in the closing minutes. Barry Rollings, the hand pass on. Wide to uh, David Polkinghorne, but an in inaccurate one, and over the line she goes for a throw-in. Almost on centre wing, in front of the members' stand. Big Jones in front, but nicely knocked away by Terry Moore, who's doing far more of the ruck work today. David O'Halloran, best recruit of 1976, a lovely half-back flanker, looking for Moncrief again. With plenty of Hawthorne players there, Kelvin Matthews. Oh, down he goes, a very heavy arm, thrown there by Peter Chisnell, and the free kick will be taken by Kelvin Matthews, the brother of Lee. There was one missed up a little while ago too when Martello put uh, Barry Cable down and it wasn't spotted. Kick from Kelvin Matthews, drifting into the pocket, Moncrief from behind. Dench got a hand to it in the front position, deflected it over the boundary line, deep in the member's pocket at the scoreboard end of the ground for the throw-in. And we're 29 minutes and five seconds into this first term. Scott, 
but beaten by Nolan. Kelvin Matthews down to a fair bump this time. Up again. Handball out to Martello. Quick shot at goal. No score under pressure from uh, Martello, who was having a run on the ball and changing at centre-half forward. And it will be Paul Feltham with the resultant free kick right in the last line of defence, hard up against the, uh, the, the boundary fence. And he'll now come out over the goal line and put North back into attack. Handball. It's dangerous. David Dench fumbled. It's loose. Hendry breaking away. Shoots at goal. Hit the post. Well, last week we saw it surge three times. North gave away goals through handball errors in defence, and that was a golden let-off, really, for them, wasn't it? Yes, that was one of their first breaks, for, big breaks for the day. Should have been a goal from 15, 20 yards out by him. There was another short pass by Dench, who found Keith Gregg, who dummied that hand pass and got oh. it away to Feltham. Oh. Oh. And down he goes again, and it's on behind play. Feltham yeah. right. moving in. Yeah. Now, that should be a reportable offence also, and it is at last. Strong umpiring. Very crudely chopped on the head. Down went uh, Keith Gregg and Lee Matthews reported. It's not an unusual thing for uh, for players to be reported in the grand final. As Serge can back me up here that it is a grand final. It's the last attempt and uh, as, as a cup at the finish of it. That's unfair because Keith Gregg certainly is one of the stars in North Melbourne's lineup. He doesn't look too well, but there's been a lot of fire in the game so far. And I think at this stage that that's a very appropriate decision. It's got to be handed out, and they've got to stop it, or they've got to put the penalty somewhere. Well, this was one of the chances North had to take, putting a player of a slight bill like Greg on Matthews. Like, there was going to be a clash at some time. And, oh, but uh, not coming in from the side like that, Serge, when the ball had gone past. Anyway, chance for Mark to Martell, and he's taken on the members' halfback flank. Well, certainly in the closing minutes of this quarter, 31 minutes have gone. Very long. Of course, we had that dust-up between Keenan and Scott that held up play for a while. Chance there for Geoffrey Ablett to take the mark. Cable chasing it across the line. And it's out in the shadows of the smoker stand. Barassi hovering on the boundary on crutches. Of course, he, for Tasmanian viewers, we all probably know by now that he was in a very bad car accident and came back very gamely. Bill Della whistling up play and there'll be a free kick here. Hawthorne's way. And it's a Barry Rollings. John Burns not terribly happy about surrendering the ball to him, but... Rollings now, Hawthorne are in a little bit of trouble. They're only 10 points in front with the use of this breeze in the first term, which is rapidly drawing to a conclusion. And that's a big, big Nolan for the first mark of the game. For him, as the siren sounds at quarter time, Hawthorne go in with a 10 point lead. 5 6 36 to North Melbourne, 4 2 26. Now, Bar Barassi hobbles off the ground, and we're about to start the second quarter of this 1976 VFL Grand Final. Hawthorne with a 10-point lead. Don't appear to be many positional changes. Dench is still on Moncrief, who's across the half-forward line. Terry Moore has gone to centre-half back on Martello. Feltham still in the back pocket. Keith Gregg still in the centre. On Lee Matthews, who is standing shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with Barry Cable. Right, well, just about to start the second quarter. Second quarter of the grand final, Hawthorne 10 points in front. Umpire Bill Della starts play. It will favour Nolan. Good tap on. Dawson Shepherded. Knights miss kicked in the middle of that pack. It'll be taken away by one of the Hawthorne players who's looking for the free kick. On the bottom of it was Lee Matthews putting his body in and getting the free kick. And the first kick of the uh, second quarter goes to Matthews. He goes out wide to brother Kelvin, who's still just near the edge of the centre square. A long one with the wind drifting down into the forward pocket. Going for the mark was Goad. Sutton came in and spoiled. Long handball back to Nolan, who'll have to sprint for it. He runs through, lost it to Kelvin Matthews. Sutton went in with a good hip and shoulder. Tried for the shirt front on Kelvin Matthews, but missed. And the ball forced out of boundary, uh, out over the line for a boundary throw in on the members' half forward flank. North Melbourne kicking towards the main scoreboard or city end of the MCG. His big crowd of about 115,000. And umpire Bill Della rules another free kick to Lee Matthews, the second for the term. And Matthews, a more deliberate kick this time towards centre-half forward. Knocked away, ball running free, the chance there for Ablett, who came well down from the wing, and he's found Alan Goad, only a matter of 30 metres out. This will be a most handy goal. They lead by 10 points, Hawthorne, after the first 90 seconds of play, and Alan Goad, normally a sharp shooter for goal. 30 metres out, almost directly in front of the eastern goal. Kick by Goad, that's his second, and it's straight through the centre. So it's two goals to Alan Goad, two to Michael Moncrief for Hawthorne. John Hendry has one goal, four, and the Hawks move to 6-6-42. North Melbourne a 4-2-26. Good opening by Hawthorne, a good goal, and uh, some 
Cal uh, Lee Matthews already with two kicks, unruffled by his report. I think North are having a lot of trouble with Ablett. They'll probably have to swing Schimmelbush across from his wing onto uh, Ablett, who's uh, easy to uh, playing Chisnell and uh, North Melbourne, a little bit of bother. A tap out by Noel this time to Greg, and here goes Schimmelbush on this side. A surge has just mentioned his name. Good piece of handball, quickly out towards uh, Terry Morby. He's too tall for it. Martello cleanly across towards. Uh, towards him. Ede. Ede it is, and the wing player, Matthews again, but he's short on a bit of pace here as Sutton got his boot in there, and that score has been scored by North Melbourne Sutton for the opposition, but it's a point for uh, North Melbourne, again. Sides are settling down now, I see Malcolm Blight is playing on the half-forward flank, and O'Halloran's picked him up, he's no longer on the back line, and Dench looking for a lead down the centre somewhere. It's coming from, uh, from Mark Dawson, and also no one. Picked up quickly by Ede again. That left foot jab up towards Moncrief. Knocked away by Dench. That's good play. Down to the centre. Cable underneath it this time. Jones put it in the arms there of uh, Goad, who's kicked two goals. A blazing shot for goal. It's a bit wild. And it's gone out of bounds on the full, about 10 metres to the right-hand side of that point post on that packed outer at the MCG with every known uh, emblem, advertising, and also... Uh, how do you do's from the various camps with North Melbourne and Hawthorne taking up the full deck of that uh, that top stand around that outer side with their come on sides. Now it'll be Sutton who goes to the outer side, the kick falling a little low, missed out there by Polkinghorne, loose at the back towards, that's Rollings, Rollings drives it back from whence it came to the goal area, Dench used his body well, wrestling there with Moncrief, it's loose, Goat again, good handball from Goat across the Henry, in the goal square, couldn't get the kick under pressure, excellent play by John Byrne. Felfin gets a handball, close to the boundary line, Scott's there, but Gumbledon will come in and save, and sees a short one on offer and finds Dench. Dench with handball to Cable, and North out of trouble with handball as they often do. Cable puts the ball out in front of Malcolm Blight, who was pushed in the back by O'Halloran. It was seen by umpire Bill Della, and play on is the call, and a good call it was too, although the advantage rule may have been paid a little bit too much. Blight lines up from 40 metres out, has a shot at goal, and it's through for a behind, and Blight did not go back over the mark and managed to get a couple of uh, metres break there. <laughs> yeah. Blight's first shot at goal sees him bring up a behind. Back towards the member's side, and the six foot five and a half inch frame of Bernie Jones has the mark. It's a high kick. Martello in the front position from behind, knocked away by Moore. Loose towards Melrose, who got a bad bounce. He shepherded well for Ick. Ick fed it across to Burns delightfully. Burns the left foot snap at goal. It'll be shepherded on the line, and it's through. It's a good goal to North Melbourne. That's the first kick by John Burns. Excellent shepherding by Stephen Ick who got the ball across to Burns with a lovely handball and from the half forward line, a 50 metre left foot snap by Burns was a very accurate one indeed. Burns uh, winning in the centre, he's always loose, he's got this uh, knack of getting away from his opponent and he's probably the only uh, uh, winner North got across that line. Blue and white colours of the North Melbourne supporters behind the goal. Ten points the difference now and that was the difference at quarter time which is five minutes ago. Umpire Bill Della. Dark ahead of the two umpires. Getting that ball down to ground. Martello driving Hawthorne forward towards centre half forward beyond that post. Chance for Scott. He'll tap it down cleverly, looking for Moncrief going by. There are plenty of North Melbourne players there, picked up by Feltham. Back towards half back. Now a battle of two players. And a great mark taken over there by Rodney Eade, is it? No, it's Jeff Ablett, the other winger. Ablett doing extremely well on that wing. Out pointing Chisnell. Long kick of a ball. This is no exception. About 15, 20 metres out. Knocked away from the Hawthorne attackers. Chance now for Barry Rollings, who'll steady from 30 metres out. Drive for goal, and he's put it through. That's his first. Bad error there by the North Melbourne defence, letting Barry Rollings in. Nicely shepherded. And had no trouble steadying and popping Hawthorne's seventh goal on the board. 7-7-49, North Melbourne 5-3-33, after six minutes of the second quarter. You couldn't imagine a ball could roll through Barry Cable's legs, but even the champions can make a mistake, and he paid dearly for it on, on that occasion. Rollings has gone to the half-forward flank, and Kelvin Matthews onto Burns in the centre, the one move made by John Kennedy at quarter time. 16-point lead to the Hawks at this stage, which is a great lead uh, at the six-minute mark in the second term, kicking against the breeze. Nolan won that tap out cleanly. He's doing well on the ruck. Bernie Jones hooking it out the back like a rugby player. Terry Moore bending down very well for a tall player. Cable getting to everything at the moment. Grabbed now by uh, uh, by Melrose, is it? Melrose kicked towards Cowton, but all chipping in there with a clever mark with Bremner. His stomach muscle are OK, and Hawthorne's handball's working well for them now as that comes up towards Kelvin Moore. 
up to the centre. A clash of arms and legs between Knights and also Stephen Ick, and the ball finds itself out of bounds. It's right in front of the members on the wing. The throw in now with uh, Jones in front. Nolan got the tap. Well, that was a dead heat, I believe. Quickly was Knights to get that ball away. Up towards Hendry. Knocked away by, uh, by John Burns, who's marking Henry very closely, and it's now on the uh, half-forward flank for Hawthorne. Just repeating the score, 7-7 Hawthorne, 5-3 North Melbourne, as a throw-in comes up, the man in front's Martello, but he patted the wrong player. Martello goes back again, all over Melrose, or Schummelbusch rather, who will take the kick, and Schummelbusch playing on the wing uh, so far in the match. The kick coming down towards Malcolm Bloody, or drifting from the side. Two tall Hawthorne players there. Jones was one, the ball once again across the line. In a struggling session in this third, uh, second term, rather. The drop short, Jones with a fist across. A bad piece of thinking by Bernie Jones, under pressure, of course, and uh, he socked that one, or socked it out of bounds. Another throw in, Nolan from behind, used his body well, a little too well, gave away the free kick. Unlucky for Nolan. And it's going to go to Jones. I see Dawson's going to cross up Ablett. And Chisnell's gone under the border. And that was touched, so it will be play on for Polkinghorne. He's forced to play on, it was well tackled, lost it. Chance, therefore, that looks to be Kelvin Matthews, who's technically in possession. A good decision by umpire Kevin Smith. He made no legitimate effort to get rid of it. From the handball, it goes to Feltham. Feltham down to the forward eye, looking for Cowton. Up high at the back of the pack, it's not loose. Who's got the pace? Melrose, but Knights outstretched him and deliberately goes through. Good play by Peter Knights. He was, had three opponents near him, and he ran it through for a force behind in North Melbourne. The only thing to do under the circumstances, and cool, calm, and collective was Peter Knights on that occasion. Kelvin Moore, the Hawthorne fullback to the members' side. Nolan from behind, tries to spoil. Rod Ead got a hand to it, deflected down to Burns, who lines up again with the left foot down to the forward pocket. Kelvin Moore in front of Keenan, couldn't hold the mark, and it's forced out deep in the forward pocket, adjacent to the behind post at the scoreboard end on the members' side for yet another throw-in. In the second term, eight minutes of play gone. Very hard to see Hawthorne's defence being improved. There's some magnificent players up there. There's Brian Doog, who's fitted in pretty well into that back pocket, and he's given the free kick here by umpire Della for a push in the back. A dangerous hand pass, but it's OK. It comes off towards Kelvin Moore, who comes across the other side, and there's Ablett again, this time out marking his new opponent, Mark Dawson, and with tons of pace, away he goes. He's just leaving Dawson in his wake with three bounces, a bad disposal this time, which is uncommon for him. Let's Henry in. But uh, Henry uh, had a cruel bounce for him. Oh, kicked out of the hands of Kelvin Ma uh, Matthews. But uh, the umpire allowed play to go. Ablett in, there, in the thick of things again. A cruel tackle there by Darrell Sutton. And Ablett, probably the best man on the ground for my money so far, has uh, picked up his ninth kick towards centre half court. He was a magnificent player a couple of weeks ago at Verfell Park. And he kicked three goals or four goals out there. And he's carrying on his work today. Back towards centre field. North Melbourne trying desperately to bring that ball forward. There's uh, the blonde Brian Dugan, also helped out by Peter Knights. And Knights, not uh, good disposal again, but falls straight in the hands of Rodney Ede. A nice pass by Ede, but intercepted there by David Dench. Dench quick to get his uh, play moving again up towards the centre. The Ick flying in from behind was Knights again. He's certainly back to the top of his form. It's Peter Knights. Right try to tackle O'Halloran, stopped him in his progress. Great mark to Ede. And Hawthorne are really fired up now in this second quarter. Ten minutes gone in the second term, and they're leading by 15 points as the ball sails up towards full forward. A bit of good talking for North Melbourne puts them right back in business through Dench. That mark and a poor piece of handball, but they'll come out of it. Will they? No, they won't. It's Goad with it now, spinning out of trouble. He's pinned. Hawthorne there. They're like ants everywhere on that forward line. Quickly across to Dench. North's handball's not working as well today. Hawthorne are putting the pressure on as Cable tumbles after the ball. Martello tried to flatten him, waiting for him to come out. Dench will get things going. He need that ball. It's a lucky one to Dawson. Dawson quickly out towards Cowton on the wing. He stretched out. He can run it at even time as he threw it down, juggling it, coming onto the half forward line, quickly across to Melrose like a hot potato getting rid of it. Where's Malcolm Blight? He's there, but manhandled there by O'Halloran. A great passage of play as the ball rolls across the forward line and North Melbourne are right back in business. Brilliant pressure work from the Hawthorne forwards on the, on the North Melbourne defence and it took North quite a while to get their, their, their handball going, getting away from their defence. Deep in the half forward line on the outer side, knocked loose, the free kick is going to Keenan or against him. No, play on, I heard the whistle no, go. it was a free. 
play on is the call. Hawthorne in possession, and it's Kelvin Moore around the outer side looking for a winner out there in Abbott, but getting in was a teammate to take the mark just in front of him, and that's uh, Big Al Martello, and he's stretched up and taken it deep on that outer wing in front of the southern stand. It's a long kick in down to the half forward line. Greg in front, first pick for the second term after being uh, felled, and he now takes this from the half back line. He plays on up towards an all Hawthorne area across the half forward line. Cable couldn't get there in time, and Dews from the back pocket chipped in to take the saving mark. 11 minutes gone into the second term. Hawthorne 7 7, leading north 5 4. That's 49 to 34. And uh, away from the centre go north again. This time through Feltham, out looking for Malcolm Blight. He's running to the ball, not as fast as maybe he could, but he cleverly taps it back in. A chance now for Cartman. Crazy Horse screams around, puts it out wide, across the face of goal. Tuck read the ball well before Schimmelbush could get there. And a good mark to Mike Tuck, a good ruck rover for Hawthorne over the past couple of seasons on the half-back line on the members' side. 12 minutes of play in the second term, and it's the same Hawthorne pattern that was employed against uh, Carlton with very, very blanketing and tight defence. John Henry takes that mark towards centre half forward. Moncrief shading his eyes from the very brilliant sunshine. Behind is Martello, but kicked away by Gumbleton. Over towards the other side. Dawson, a bad bounce for him. Two against one, but uh, the one man in Mark Dawson wins out. And that could be just about his first kick for the game. He's been very quiet so far. It's just his second kick, taken by David O'Halloran, who looks forward towards uh, Barry Rollings, but the kick is wide and over the line and out of bounds between centre wing and right half forward flank with Hawthorne in attack and leading 49 points to 34 after 13 minutes. Jones swiped that ball back, but Burns ducks through a tackle, took the free kick, the handball by Gumbleton, back towards uh, by Hawthorne in the centre there to Rollings, and he's uh, grabbed. Rollings doing quite well in the centre, but so too is North Melbourne's John Burns. That jabbing left foot pass quickly across towards uh, Ablett, Ablett moved down well and quickly uh, taking the ascendancy on that wing and giving Hawthorne a lot of drive. That's kick number 10 for Jeff Ablett, and we're 14 minutes through the second quarter. Now he's taking plenty of time, a good 60 metres out, and this kick's going to land right up in that goal square. There it goes, it's a long kick. Just touched on the line, according to the umpire, and uh, that's a behind, it's a second for, uh, uh, for Jeff Ablett. Goal seems to be eluding him at this stage, but there's plenty of time left. Huge crowd here today. Top sections of the northern stand filled to capacity. Ick up for the mark, couldn't take it. Kelvin Moore lost the handball. Fighting on for it out there was Feltham. Moore lost it again. Back towards Polking Horn. He went down to Terry Moore. Off the ground by Bernie Jones. Backing into it, Moncrief, and lost it. In went to Alan Goad, and hard was Keith Gregg. But North will clear. Back towards the centre. Blight up too early. Good reading and anticipation by Dawson, but he lost it. Running at the ball and not at Dawson was a Hawthorne player, and that lets uh, North Burns in. Down to the half-forward line again, but it was meant for Stephen Hick and Kelvin Moore read it delightfully to take the mark at centre-half back. We've played nearly 15 minutes. It's a lead out wide to a very good first-year player in young Rod Ede from Glenorchy, and uh, his kick is somewhat off the side of the boot, and North player Melrose in trouble. Scott didn't go for the ball. Melrose did the second time. Knocked it straight back to O'Halloran, beautifully smothered by Gumbledon. A lot of pressure on now, a real finals match, and it's Schimmelbush who blazes away down to the forward line again, and this is Bremner. Bremner's about to be tagged, but had that extra yard of pace to get her out of trouble. Moore knocks it away from Martello. And who's waiting? It's O'Halloran. He's in trouble, but he gets his kick. Off the side of the boot, reading it best was David Dench. No mark. Burns in trouble. That's John Byrne. Back towards Dench, about to be tackled. Hit it towards the boundary line, kept it in. Was tripped and lost it. Good play, Polking Horn. He quickly transferred play back. And good shepherding by Scott on Gumbleton. Allowed Hendry to drift in from the side and take a beautiful mark. Short pass was on, but dropping back there, Keenan. Too slow, Peter Keenan. Tackled out of it. In went Keith Gregg free kick, no play on is the call. Good play by Greg, and a free kick to Keith Gregg, and he had to battle against superior odds all on his own. Keith Gregg still being used as a shadow for Lee Matthews. He's in trouble now against brother Kelvin Matthews, but gets the hand pass to Malcolm Blight, is it no Daryl Sutton? And Sutton forced to kick Harry on the wrong foot, and a mark taken by Henry again. Right on the 15 minute mark of the second quarter, and John Henry will have no trouble with the distance here. He has scored one goal for about 35 metres out. There's the low spiral torpedo punch kick and it hit the post on the way through and that's one goal five to Henry. 
Hawthorne moved to 7-9-51. North Melbourne a 5-4-34. The North Melbourne defence, Sergio, under a lot of pressure up there. Yes, uh, Calvin Matthews, uh, all the credit for that. Two good pressure tackles and making the, the North defence get rattled, uh, not able to clear the ball cleanly. Malcolm Blight is normally a focal point for North Melbourne and is unable to break away from that uh, very tight playing uh, David O'Halloran. The ball taken by Brian Dews, one of the Hawthorne's great pressure defenders. Quickly across to Pockinghorn, he puffed his cheeks and jabbed at the ball, but he mistimed it. The handball of the man running through was good play as he wheels round now, and it's Henry again. He's magic today as Henry's really caught on. Can't kick goals over five behind, so push in the back. Kelvin Matthews looks a little bit upset about the decision, but it's on. Daryl Sutton hands the ball back to Paul Feltham. He gets a call from Melrose, who seems to be OK now. He was down and out of gas there a moment or two ago, and a driving kick to Blight. In front there was uh, was Dooge again. Hawthorne playing in front, putting on the pressure, not letting Hawthorne get away by an inch. Clever play, Alan Goad. Brilliant play, Alan Goad. The ball won't bounce for him now, it does. He lines up, drives up towards uh, goal, but it's a, it's a bad one. One point only, and uh, Hawthorne's uh, approach has come unstuck. Two goals, one for, uh, for Alan Gage and North are a little bit worried. Yes, sir, uh, getting outplayed right across their half forward line. They just haven't got a winner in any of the three positions there. Dench goes to the members' side, a chance for a mark out there to Moore. Gumbledon fumbling, missed the handball, he's close to the boundary, just kept it in play. Now it will bounce out. No, there's going to be a free kick against Don Scott, I think for the illegitimate use of an elbow, and Gumbledon with the free kick. And he's uh, well back into defence. He's on the members' side of the ground and back towards the half-back flank, back pocket position. Need a good kick to get it out of trouble. Dummies towards Keenan. A silly play. The kick would have been far better value. Now Hawthorne have a chance through Scott. He's having trouble picking it up. He does. Runs around. Goes for a long run. Steady. Stops. Gets the kick in a short one. And a lucky missed kick into the waiting arms of Goad again. But Don Scott did well. That's Polkinghorne, not Goad, who's taken the mark. And again... Bad handball, you could say, must be called bad handball if it lets the opposition in with easy shots at goal. Polkinghorn is scoreless in the match and steers that one close, drifting away. Just, is it a mark on the goal line? No. A free kick. It'll go a free kick to North Melbourne, and that's Daryl Sutton. It was close, the kick with the wind was swinging back in, and right on the goal line, it's Sutton, who kicked five last week from the half-forward line in a very impressive finals match. Now back in defence, taking this kick from the goal line. It's a good kick to the outer side, but it's out towards Ablett. Dawson using his body. Will the mark be paid? Yes, it will. Dawson plays on from the outer half-back flank, looking for Blight, who waited for it, and it'll come to him. Beautiful play, Malcolm Blight. He's got to run right around. Dummies the handball. Too much pace for Kelvin Matthews. Spears it down to the half-forward line, looking out there for Burns, into the waiting arms of Bremner. Bremner back to the teammate and back to Bremner was good play. In towards the centre of the ground, too far for Cable, and the mark there taken by Polkinghorn again between wing and centre. Really close to the 20 minute mark, and Polkinghorn playing half forward flank and doing fairly well. Towards centre half forward, looking for Moncrief, who had the player Dench in his back, but uh, quite legitimately going for the mark. There's a free kick picked out again, and uh, Keith Gregg picking up probably his third free kick for the quarter in that uh, position tagging Lee Matthews on the forward line. He sends North Melbourne back towards centre wing, and there's that man again, Jeffrey Ablett, for kick number 11, and he's uh, doing particularly well. Hard to see why Greg hasn't been put onto Ablett, at least to try and nullify him. Kick forward again, and uh, the North Melbourne defence continuing to be under pressure, and this is Henry again. He's taken uh, three marks in the first quarter, and how many marks in this turn? Seven, now. seven total. John Henry, and uh, not a long way out for Henry if he can get that left boot of his working. Here's the kick, floating in, a magnificent kick, but uh, only inaccuracy is letting Henry down. That's one goal, six. One, six. And Hawthorne have scored two goals, five in this term. North Melbourne, one goal, two. The Hawks moving to 7-11-53. A 19-point lead over North Melbourne, 5-4-34. Dench out to the centre, the blight, but knocked away by his opponent, uh, O'Halloran. Picked up now by Ede, who's doing well in his first uh, VFL Grand Final. A chip shot quickly up towards Mike Tuck, and the bounce was good. Quickly back towards Pockinghorn, but he's tagged by Chisnell. North waiting on Cable to get things working for them, and Malcolm Blight to back him up, and he's caught, but got the kick away. Good play by it. Up towards Schimmelbush. Schimmelbush, uh, a lot is expected of him today. He hasn't done a lot so far. Up the Mick Nolan, but at the back, it's Bremner. Couldn't take it. Straight away, is it? Can he kick it straight? It's going through! 
hit feet around beautifully like a banana at the last second. And North Melbourne are back in business. They're only two goals behind now. They were three goals behind moments ago. And there's still plenty of fight left in the ruse. A valuable goal, that one, to North Melbourne. But they've been out, outplayed by Hawthorne for the last 15 minutes. Hawthorne just not putting the score on the board. And that was a valuable goal by Ick to get, bring them back within touch. First goal to Stephen Ick. He's kicked one, two. Great defender last week. And he's now across on the half-forward line. And his opponent today... So far has been Peter Knights. Back at midfield, Keenan is on the ball. It's a free kick. It's against North Melbourne again for having five players in the centre circle. You can still see them in there. And uh, Bernie Jones with the free kick. Barassi not looking happy with that decision. Gumbledon will knock away second time. No mark to Moncrief. It's loose. Running out from defence is Feltham. Feltham down by Moncrief. No free kick further afield. Stephen Ick. Will that be paid? No, but Knights off the pack. Great recovery. Back to the half-back line, or almost to the centre of the ground at least, and Malcolm Blight has taken the mark and was frustrated then in his efforts to play on by Don Scott. Now Blight is having a run on the ball, changing as a ruck rover with Schimmelbush now. Out wide looking for Stephen Ick again. Couldn't take the mark. Trip, play on, no free kick. O'Halloran feeds the ball across towards Dooge. Dooge looks further afield towards Polkinghorne. Martello there. Beautiful sidestep from the big fellow. And he lines up with a pass again up towards Hendry. Counton has dropped back into defence now. This is Keenan. Keenan's kick was beautifully smothered by Goad. Counton ran into trouble. Got a handball out. Back to Keenan who's in trouble. At least he got rid of it. It's loose to the boundary line. Oh, one went in and across the back of the head there by uh, Counton. And that's the uh, recipient of the free kick. Hendry it was spotted, and that's a silly free kick because although Henry's not kicking straight at one goal six, he has been Hawthorne's best player on the forward line by far. Short pass, tuck. Collected one for his troubles, but got the football as well. Well, that one stood out really like a telegraph message, didn't it? Uh, tuck was leading for, oh, it seemed ten seconds or so, and Henry was watching him, but North Melbourne players didn't bother to cover him too well, and Michael Tuck normally another long kick of the football, landing it right in the goal square, knocked away, Kelvin Matthews, who snaps another goal for Hawthorne. That's his first, Lee Matthews has one, Kelvin Matthews won now, and he rode that pack beautifully, Sergio. Hawthorne, 8-11-59, answering the challenge from North Melbourne, 6 4 40 at the 24-minute mark, second turn. Hawthorne getting a lot of value from their ruck rovers, Polk and Horn and Tuck, and they've given them the supremacy around the ground at North and missing from Blight and Dawson and uh, Schimmelbush, who's now on the half board and uh, on the ruck. As I see it at the moment, uh, Hawthorne have that edge. That week's spell certainly has done them a lot of good. They're quicker across the ground. They're first of the ball on most occasions. And uh, I think they realise this. They've got everything going for them. And North a little bit jaded, and they have players on the injured list who were Feltham and Dawson and Cross Crosswell is not playing and also Melrose they're contributing but I don't think they have that zest that they normally have and that's what you need for a grand final Hawthorne seem to have the upper hand at the moment as far as fitness is concerned and the ball in the centre by Bill Della who fought his way back after being uh, written off as an umpire or sporting career Matthews lost it on the way through Polkinghorne's grabbed beautifully there by number 36 which is Stephen Ick the tackling's been good from both sides. It's been pressure football right from the start as we've come to accept the VFL football these days. It's all pressure all the way. Keenan, Rollings for Hawthorne, up to Scott. YG moves well for a big fellow as he strides out. He must cover at least a metre and a bit when he gets those big legs of his working. And the ball out of bounds, uh, moving up towards uh, Hawthorne's half forward line again with Keenan and Martello this time and Martello does a lot of the ruck work when it's on the forward line to give Scott a rest Keenan got that one away as you could see Pockinghorn missed it, Cable didn't get it either for North Melbourne, it's jammed up at the moment and it will be a ball up, this time on the wing and uh, we've just hit the time on period with Hawthorne leading by 19 points a big thump out of it from Keenan, a chance for North Schimmelbush, looking for a free kick, can't get it, he went to the ground then, still no free, hit it to the boundary line, finally umpire Kevin Smith sees an infringement to Wayne Schimmelbush, who was looking for that to break the pack up, and he succeeded, and he'll get this kick in the shadows of the middle hand. Drives the ball down, deep into the sunlight down there, Hawthorne player went down, it's loose at the back of the pack, Dooge's kick was smothered, here's a golden opportunity for John Byrne, who was at fullback, snaps a left foot, goal! Well done, John Byrne. Byrne has gone down onto the forward line. Cowton is the new shadow for John Hendry. 
and Byrne, who has played most of the uh, games this season in defence, has kicked his first goal for the match. A timely one for North, their seventh, 59 to 46. 8 11 to 7 4, 26 minutes gone. Yes, uh, Byrne uh, taking a bit of a shame off him. He's been banished from the back line and uh, an opportunist goal. North Melbourne, they've also changed more to centre half forward. Blight to centre half back and. Uh, I need some more. I think they might need Sutton up on the four line to give them a bite. Lovely knock forward by uh, Martello to Scott to Tuck and immediately Hawthorne coming back into attack again. But there's Daryl Sutton, last week's champion, the saviour of North Melbourne last week with five goals. He's playing on the back line today, David O'Halloran, the first year player to Lee Matthews who just lopes after the ball, lets it bounce, looking for the hand pass which is on to Ablett. Good teamwork by Hawthorne but equally good defence by North Melbourne. Smother this forward move by the Hawks on this occasion. Hawthorne 8 11 59. North Melbourne 13 points behind, 7 4 46. Throw in on Hawthorne's right half forward flank. Snared away from the attacking move by Keith Gregg into the hands of uh, Al Martello. That was a big kick by Gregg, and Martello putting the pressure on again behind the pack as Kelvin Matthews. Three or four players misread the flight of that ball, and Matthews is using his judgment extremely well. We saw him snap a very fine goal in the goal square five minutes ago, and now the chance for his second. It's the kick from Matthews, about 45 metres out. It's floating just across the face of goal. And Hawthorne continuing their inaccuracy. That's one goal, one to Kelvin Matthews. And Hawthorne have uh, had 20 shots for goal for eight goals, 12. And North Melbourne, 11 shots for goal for seven goals. So Hawthorne not getting the percentage that North are at this stage. John Henry's kicked uh, six behinds for Hawthorne as well. The small chip oh. out to Melrose, bundled over by Lee Matthews. Melrose getting the free kick. Looking for somewhere to go, uses that handball, but it's becoming unstuck, a mistake, and Scott picks up. And his goal, and Hawthorne are making capital of North Melbourne's mistakes. They made a few last week against Carlton. Uh, they've repeated the dose today, and this is causing them concern, as you can see the players disconsolately walking back with hands on hips, and that's a sign of disappointment. Mistakes are very costly. Hawthorne jumped back again to a 20-point lead at this stage, it's a very handsome lead at uh, the 28-minute mark in the uh, in the second term. Fatal mistake going to time on. You just can't afford the, uh, the, to lose goals just before half time when you're coming in for the break. And uh, again, it was the Hawthorne relentless tackling and the chasing that uh, uh, flung that handball. 20 points in front of Hawthorne. Burns couldn't read the bounce. Blight gets the kick out from the centre. Down to half forward. Cable was a little pushing and shoving. Terry Moore has taken the mark. There's a short pass on offer. It sets Stephen Ick up. Oh, almost a good attempt to spoil by Knights. Running the same way as the flight of the ball. But Ick, who has already goaled in this term, is lining up from about 50 metres out. He's deep on the members' half forward flank. He's a renowned backman. He's also a very versatile player. He's allowed for the wind again. It's going to come back just missed a behind to Stephen Ick who's kicked one goal three so far in the match and a goal then for North Melbourne would have been very handy indeed 9-12 66 a Hawthorne 7 5 47 North 19 points the difference Polking Hornick receiving the short one wants to play on and now has to onto his left boot it's a short one out to the member side Chisnell will be there first to the ball and uh, Rodney Eade has given him quite a bath so far in the match. Chisnell plays on. I was about to say there may not be enough time left for a goal. And there's the siren for half-time in the grand final for 1976. Hawthorne, 9-12, 66 at half-time. Lead North Melbourne, 7-5, 47. Standing by for the start of the second half. No man changes but a few positional changes and one of them Keith Gregg has gone back onto the wing Daryl Sutton to the half forward line and here's the start of the third quarter of the 1976 VFL grand final Hawthorne with a 19 point lead Don Scott running down on the forward line Noel on the first tap chance for Dawson who overran it Terry Moore his kick was smothered Tuck feeding it out wide to Rollings Rollings the left foot pass into the pocket to Henry beautiful beautiful play Tuck Across to Rollings, Rollings with pinpoint accuracy has found Hendry for mark number seven, deep eight. in the eighth mark. Mark number eight, he goes back in field towards Lee Matthews, about the same distance but has widened the angle considerably. Lee Matthews, who was reported in the first quarter in an incident with Keith Gregg, has kicked just the one goal so far in the match. He's 45 to 50 metres out from goal on the outer half forward flank. Lines it up with the drop punt, swinging right across the face of goal, and 
No score. Out of bounds on the full. But he joins Alan Goad. Who were both kicked out on the full when firing for goal. John Byrne back into defence. Kicks up towards the half forward line. Missed there by Tuck and Ablett. Chance for Kelvin Matthews. Dawson out with it. Tuck took it away from him. Was retarded. Cable running around. Was dragged high. Back towards Dench. Dench, Gumbledon. Gumbledon's kick smothered. Almost a free kick. The ball ricocheted loose again. It was kicked out by North and into the waiting arms of Alan Martello, who could just be within kicking distance. A minute and a half gone into the third term. No addition to the half-time score, which is Hawthorne 9-12, North 7-5. And Martello hasn't scored in the match. He's 55 metres out on the half-forward flank. It's going to drop short, knock loose, and forced through by the North defenders for a behind. The first score in the match to Alan Martello. Hawthorne go to 9-13-67. A clear 20 points in front of North Melbourne, 7 5 47. Hawthorne kicking in this term towards the city end, the main scoreboard end of the MCG, before a crowd that could be around about 115,000. David O'Halloran, who's been fairly quiet, shoots the, the, uh, the pass across towards Rodney Ede on that flank. And Hawthorne coming to business again. A short chip pass has ended up out of bounds. Hawthorne kicking with this sour easterly breeze, which during the half time interval has certainly built up to uh, more than a breeze. Uh, they've uh, really got the use of it in this turn. Cowden, hand pass, and I think that was Felton who took the ball away. Back towards the centre it goes. Plenty of Hawthorne players there. They're helping each other. O'Halloran, the hand pass back to Tuck now. And Tuck towards centre half forward. And not a North Melbourne player was seemingly interested in that uh, exchange. Now they're under pressure on the back line. Nolan, back towards centre field. Mark taken there by Barry Rollins, who's really coming into his own in the centre. Rollings to put Hawthorne back into attack. Took plenty of time about it. Lovely long kick. Looking for Scott there in front of the pack. Knocked away from him. Roving is Kelvin Matthews. Fires the shot in for goal, but it's right across and just lands inside the boundary line. And still in play. No, the umpire ruled it out. Can't see how that would have happened. It would have had to have been a free kick uh, had that been ball gone over the line because it bounced back into play. Had it been over the line, it would have been a free kick to the opposition because it was on the full. Scott. Gets the ball down to number four, Kelvin Matthews again. Kicked away for North Melbourne. Back towards uh, centre-half back. And the one-hander taken by Terry Moore. Gets the hand pass to Barry Cable, who had North Melbourne's first two goals from memory. And he gets the hand pass to John Burns, who spears the pass in a beautiful pass. Over towards Schimmelbush. Goes beyond him. Stephen Ick is there. Peter Knights is number 24. Ick can't handle it. In comes Bremner to help out Knights. The two Hawthorne long-headed backmen. And the free kick for Perseverance goes to Stephen Ick. Number 36 for North Melbourne, a matter of 50 metres out, and kicking into this South East League breeze. Stephen Ick has already scored one goal. It was a lovely goal that lifted North Melbourne temporarily in that second term. Certainly brought them back from, at that time, 19 points down from, to 13 points. Now Ick towards the Richmond end. It's floating, it's floating. Touched by Martello, but behind the line, and it's a goal. Second goal to Stephen Ick. Two goals, three he has, and he's doing very well. Played well last week in defence. And now he's got uh, the uh, highest score for the North Melbourne team. Two goals, three. And North Melbourne moved to 8-5-53. The first goal since half-time. Hawthorne a 9-13-67. Sergio Silvani. Good start to the quarter by North. They need to hang on be, to be within 12 points in three-quarter time at least of, uh, of Hawthorne. And uh, it's been a good start. Greg in his right for position on the wing now as John Burns, their centre player, gets the ball into a tackle. It's more a clever mark taken there by Daryl Sutton, who's been moved at last to the half forward line where he starred last week in their great win over Carlton. Sutton booted five goals last week. And maybe it's not too late to, uh, with North changes to get them right back in the game. 14 points down as Sutton boots that long ball. It's going uh, pretty close, it's dropping short. It was Kelvin Moore who's form has tapered off towards the end of the season steered that one through for with his hand for a behind for the opposition so it's 13 points of difference five minutes into the third term North Melbourne kicking into the breeze towards the uh, the Jollymont end and Kelvin Moore having a good think about uh, to whom he's going to kick the ball this time he goes out towards Martello waiting at the back was Chester he breaks away gets a left foot kick up towards a half forward line Dude's in great position Gee, that half uh, back line and the full back line for Hawthorne's desperate. Vivid memories of last year's grand final as he passes the ball across towards Barry Rowlings, doing a great, uh, going great guns in the centre. That ball dropping there for the long striding Don Scott, but Gumbleton's equally uh, with him. Taken by the man running behind an ablet, but the handball's too long.
Jones is too wobbly and uh, Greg seen the ball across the line. It looks like uh, Croswell. It's, it's Croswell warming up on the bench and if he comes on there's going to be some more fireworks. Keenan from behind but Jones in front directed it down neatly. Ablett got a quick kick at the ball it should be all north but no Moncrief drifted in and read it well. Collected one uh, across the mowers for his trouble as he came in but he just drifted in neatly for that one and is within kicking distance. Moncrief has kicked two goals, one, didn't touch the ball at all or didn't get a kick during the second term. He's kicked 96 for the season, now he lines up from 50 metres out, allowed for the wind. It's swinging right on the goal line and just through for a minor score. Behind to Moncrief, he's kicked 2-2. Two -two. Hawthorne, 9-14-68, steadying at the moment, north, 8-6-54. The margin, 14 points and uh, nearly seven minutes gone into this third quarter. Malcolm Blight with a good kick out, Terry Moore using his body but missed it. Ablett read it well and will have more pace than Moore as he streams away. Look at Ablett go, he ran the full measure and some and uh, Terry Moore chased and chased and in doing so Ablett ran just a little too far and Terry Moore for North will get the result with free kick. Wants to play on but he'll have to come right across 20 metres or so to his left and take up the kick over the mark right on the edge of the centre square. He's at centre half back North in this third term, kicking to our left, which is the Jollymont end, up towards Sutton again in front. Almost took the mark. It's loose to Lee Matthews. Short kick, Dawson, who has done very little, has drifted in to take the mark. Dawson, in fact, finished on Ablett on the outer wing in the second term, but then shifted away from there. Not kicking well, and a lucky one, a missed kick. Found Feltham to Burns. Away go North. Burns lines up, drives it deep in towards the goal. Nolan got front position, couldn't quite take the mark. Douge is there to clear again after the ball, ricocheted from those players' hands. Greg from behind against two opponents, hit it towards the boundary line. Lee Matthews is out. And that will get a roar from uh, the North supporters who are in the Olympic stand because Matthews was reported with an incident with Greg earlier on in the match. Notice that while Croswell is warming up on the boundary, uh, the Clough Doctor keeping a careful eye on one player on the field. He just can't quite see who his attention is trained on. John Burns, the hand pass to John Byrne without a miss. And Byrne from centre half forward. Tackled the pass off the side of the boot, knocked away beautifully by Moore. Down to David O'Halloran, who streaks away through centre half back. Great defence by Hawthorne, who build their game on that mighty half back line and uh, backed up by Moore on that full back line. Now, this is Terry Moore taking the mark at centre half back for North, looking for John Burns. Moncrief tagging him well. The hand pass is an accurate one, it goes across to David Dench, who's right out there on the centre wing, back to John Byrne, and Byrne towards centre half forward, and watch out for Bremner there, number 20, he couldn't handle the ball, it's free, coming in there is Bremner again, trying to get rid of the ball, and the penalty goes against him, I can't really see how he could get rid of that ball, because the players were hugging him tight, and Bremner doesn't understand it either, a free kick to Wayne Schimmelbush, a matter of 35, 40 metres out. The angle you can see is quite tight because he's uh, very close to the boundary line and Schimmelbush lines up this goal. Goal umpire sitting in behind it. It's offline. I think the doctor is going to Keith Gregg. Up goes the club doctor and a trainer. And yes, it is to Keith Gregg, the North Melbourne skipper, who, uh, as I said, was on the receiving end of a Lee Matthews... Uh, incident earlier in the first quarter that put him down for the count. He's back up. The doctor's been out to see him and Croswell is still warming up on the boundary line. Now out on that outer side, the ball has gone over the line and will be thrown in. The rucks have not arrived as yet. Now they do. Terry Moore and uh, Don Scott wrestling. Moore lost it to Lee Matthews who burrowed in and got it. Down he went and there'll be a free kick and that was against who? One of the North players on the outer side just being spoken to. Chisnell. Chisnell it was. Rough, tough Peter Chisnell, the butcher. And the ball now kicked right back towards the goal square. So Clay, with a relayed free kick and a 15-metre penalty, will go almost down towards the outer wing. And Chisnell is still having words with the umpire, which is Kevin Smith out there. And Croswell now really into the warm-up preparation work. Prior to coming on, we think the doctor and trainers have been to Keith Gregg, who is now back on the wing a couple of times in this third quarter. Gets that kick down towards Jones, but it's a very reliable Frank Gumbel who marked that ball on that halfback flank in the cricket practice wicket area. And the Gumbleton, one of the greats of North Melbourne. First mark into the centre. Wind's getting a little stronger in this quarter, and North Melbourne a disadvantage because they're kicking into it. But the Malcolm Blight hands the ball back to his teammate there in uh, in Daryl Sutton this time, who slipped back quickly to the back line, up towards a half forward line, but 
Hawthorne are still there. There's always one up and about three down. A handball from North Melbourne. It's good across to Falcon. The man running through there is it. He steadies, checks his balance, boots up towards full forward. Nolan's too slow. Moore couldn't get there in time, but it's a good effort by both those players, and it gives North Melbourne another chance because the throw-in's coming up right against their point post. Nolan taking the throw-in. Schimmelbush fumbles momentarily, then he trips. Bad luck, he's not having a good day today. Gives the Hawthorne's defenders a chance. A trip by Peter Knights, and the blonde half-back champion will take the free kick right in the last line of defence, and Hawthorne are leading by 13 points. We're at the 11.5-minute mark of the third term. Peter Knights, who with Ian Bremner and Brian Doog are doing a fantastic job on that half-back and back line. Cable, the hand pass to Daryl Sutton, impeded, but he keeps on going. But the ball rebounds off the boot of Michael Tuck. He gets the hand pass back. There's uh, number five Sutton in there again. Terry Moore helps out, so did his Gumbledon. Gary Rowlings can't grab it, neither does Martello. He did momentarily. Lost possession when tackled. Rowlings in there again. He's one of Hawthorne's best players in this third term giving them a lot of drive from the centre and probably shading John Burns. 13 kicks to Barry Rollings. Rollings just wide of centre, keeps that ball out wide, going to Henry, who normally is a very safe and secure mark. Fumbled that one, let uh, Gary Cowton in, he's tagged now, gets a hand pass right in the direction of Lee Matthews, and Matthews will put Hawthorne right back into attack. Looking for the short pass to Moncrief, it's a stray just for the moment. David Dench traps it, the hand pass intercepted by Matthews. Beautiful play by Matthews to Moncrief. Moncrief into the goal mouth and it bounces through for a behind. Great play by that individual champion, Lee Matthews. Hawthorne well, intercepting quite a few uh, of uh, North Melbourne's handballs, and uh, without this functioning for them, uh, North look, uh, uh, they're battling. Well, Hawthorne haven't scored a goal, and we played 13 minutes into the second term, and they have the use of the breeze. They lead 9-15-69 to North 8-7-55. And it's that man Rollins again, kick number 14 from centre-half back down towards the forward line, and Dawson chipped in to take the saving mark for North. Scott definitely started that, and Dawson, surprisingly, wanted to go on with it, and quite rightly, a 15-metre penalty against John Scott for stopping Mark Dawson from playing on, and uh, Dawson, even himself, who normally is meek and mild, and a second 15-metre penalty because Scott wouldn't come back as Bill Della told him to, and that lets uh, North off the hook. But again, Dawson missed kicks badly. Bernie Jones, not a good effort, but deflected it with his boot. And luckily, Rollings was there waiting for it. All he has to do is pick it up, which he does, on the edge of the centre square. Again, down towards Lee Matthews, but just chipping in was Rod Ead to take it. And a neat pass from Rollings. Great disposal from that player. Now, Rod Ead with a long kick down to the forward line. Moncrief from behind, went up too early. Getting a hand to it there was Dench. Will he kick or go for the handball this time? Puts the number 10s right into it, and it goes to the outer side. Chisnell has front position. Cleverly knocks the ball on. There were two or three opponents around him. Hit it on the second time, but straight into the waiting arms of O'Halloran, who was the meat in the sandwich. Got it towards Matthews. Bad bounce. Sutton comes in to lend assistance. Goad overran the ball. A lot of pressure on at the moment, and good play there. Let's see Sutton, who got the free kick, and went for the handball and lost it and did well to tackle again. And the tackling is fierce at the moment, and finally it goes to Blight. Blight streaking through the centre of the ground. His third bounce. Great play. Short pass, Feltham, but it was knocked away by Michael Tuck. And out wide again it goes to Bernie Jones. He spots three players on the outer side. And who sits in underneath to take it? It's Rod Ede again on the outer wing. Each kick, a chip shot. Hawthorne are really cutting North Melbourne into ribbons at the moment as uh, that kick comes down to full forward. No one able to take that one as Don Scott said, bouncing uh, through for a score. A point only for Hawthorne, which extends their lead now to uh, 15 points. 15 minutes, by the way, through this third quarter as David Dench boots the ball back into play towards Peter Keenan. Up behind him was, uh, was Abbott. Keith Gregg, who we thought was coming off, is taking that ball away. He's still fighting on. Great player, Keith Gregg. But there's his opponent, Abbott, who's one of Hawthorne's best, a star today. Up towards full forward. Gumbled in there, but tried to pump it away from Scott. But Scott had that front position and jockeyed under the ball. And Scotty, who's really put in for the three quarters so far, uh, has a chance to really drive this one through for his uh, second goal. Constable preparing to come off. Who's coming off? Seconds away from that decision is Don Scott taking his time right on the boundary from about 15 metres out. And he's getting the rhubarb from uh, the pack crowd at the MCG. He's trying a left foot kick, a boomerang kick. It didn't come off, it's gone right across the front of the goal, out on the full, and it's a free kick to North Melbourne. Crossball waiting to come off, and Keenan's coming off. There's Brent Croswell, Tiger, warming up on the fence. And that left knee very heavily strapped after hurting it three weeks ago. 
Keenan off, Croswell on, and straight up to full forward. Now, he may be on one leg. He's not stretching out all that freely. There's a Mark to Dawson on the outer side, and Keenan dons the uh, dressing gown, and Croswell goes straight up to full forward. Will that lift north? A penalty over on the outer side, and Dawson, uh, who had an opponent in Matthews run over the mark, will come up and take the kick from the outer half-back flank. 16 minutes gone in the third quarter. Hawthorne 9, 16, 70, north 8, 7, 55. Keenan has been taken off rather than through injury. We'll pick up his statistics in a moment. For big man, he didn't do much, that's certain. A hand pass to Malcolm Blight. North Melbourne moving forward. Croswell, a chance to come into the game. The hand pass is on. Beautiful play by him to Schimmelbush. Schimmelbush from about 30 metres out. A hand pass, but interception there by Tuck. And Brent Croswell immediately into the play, and uh, he's in, the, in more ways than one. It's on up in the goal square as play has gone on over to the centre wing, and play has been held up. Croswell, Croswell straight away. Put Brian the down. Umpire Delic moving in and remonstrating. Now it's Smith remonstrating with Brent Croswell, who has immediately injected fire into this North Melbourne team. <laughs> to say the least. He has an inferiority complex, hasn't he? He's touched the player before he's touched the ball, Brent Croswell. 17 minutes of the third term. David Polkinghorne with the ball, close to the boundary line. Back towards centre wing. North Melbourne closing the game up on Hawthorne now. Barry Rowling's in there, number 22. Struggling for possession. Umpire Della must call up play here. And he picked a free kick out. This will go to Martello. Hawthorne leads 70 to 55. A 15-point advantage. Looking over there for Henry again. Knocked away from him by Mark Dawson. No, was it Dawson? Doesn't matter. The ball is out of play. 17 minutes gone in this third term. Hawthorne led by 10 points at quarter time. 19 points at half time. And the North Melbourne runner having a word to Brent Croswell at the other end of the ground. Croswell telling the uh, North Melbourne runner too, I think, to mind his own business. He says, I'm all right, and you go and look after the other 17 players. He shooed him off, back in play. Blight chipping in, missed the mark. Moncrief out looking for Goad. Cable on his hammer, back to Ede. Nolan chipping in, got it back to Cable. Cable not going for the run, but a perfect pass into the centre of the ground finds Sutton. Now North starting to run. Sutton on the left foot up to the full forward position. Schimmelbush, his body was used well. Croswell overran the ball. Free kick against Croswell for holding Kelvin Moore. And Moore to take this free kick at the Jollymon end of the ground, 20 metres out from the North goal. And not a well-placed kick towards the boundary line. And before Dews could get there, Felton ran it over for a throw-in. Checking the time. 18 minutes gone into this third term of the grand final for 1976. Hawthorne trying to win their third flag and North their second. Sutton trying to contest in the ruck. Lost by Feltham. Goad takes it away for Hawthorne with a long kick down the members' wing. Cowton in there wrestling with it. Missed by John Byrne. This is Lee Matthews. We'll get a bit of a raspberry also. Slips at the crucial moment, but perfect balance. Short chip shot. Great play, Lee Matthews, to Henry. Henry's kick one goal, six. Fires at goal. It's bouncing. Wrong side of the goalpost for the Hawks. Through for behind. One goal, seven to John Hendry in the match. Hawthorne 9, 17, 71. 16 points in front of North, 8, 7, 55. Runner out again to Brent Croswell. He's given away two free kicks in the two few seconds he's been on the ground. Dench, very pensive at the moment. Puts a chip shot out quickly. Desperate defence as he finds John Byrne quickly across towards uh, Chisnell. Long striding gumble and takes the ball on the wing now. North doing a lot of attacking in this third quarter. The pass came in beautifully to Sutton, but Sutton made it because he changed direction and came back and took that one beautifully. A good player, Sutton. Played it, started on the back line, quickly moved to the forward line at the start of this third quarter, and North Melbourne gradually pegging uh, Hawthorne back. 16 points down as Sutton's kick comes up towards the forward line. A mark drop there, and it shouldn't have been by John Burns. Hawthorne's defence is great. Chisnell gets it to Cable. He's kicked two, but there's two Hawthorne defenders where that ball's going to land, and good backing up there allows Kelvin Moore to take that overhead mark. Not a good uh, disposal, but it's OK now as Barry Rollings, a star for Hawthorne, directs that ball straight down towards Eve. He'll run well into the bounce. Has a quick look. Strides past the half-forward line. Got a paddock in front of him. A beautiful pass to Lee Matthews. Play on, he didn't hold it long enough as they tumble over the top of him. Henry knocked the ball away, giving North Melbourne's blight a chance. Picked up now by Big Al Martello, a shot for goal. As usual, a stray on the forward line, and it's sailed across the line on the full, and a kick in, a free kick to North Melbourne, as Barassi not very happy, and what more can he do? How many more tricks can he pull out of the book? North, Hawthorne wasting this quarter. They're uh, much superior in general playing. They've only kicked five points at this stage, and it's 20 minutes into the quarter. Yes, five points to one goal, two by North Melbourne. 
and supposedly Hawthorne have the use of this sour sleep breeze. Feltham beautifully tackled, gets rid of it, over to Keith Gregg. Gregg looking for Terry Moore, who's a bit slow, but cleverly taps it back to his skipper. And Keith Gregg, dead set centre wing, tackled there by David O'Halloran nicely, forced him off balance, and the mark taken by Peter Knights. Knights who performed so creditably to fail only by three yes, votes, I think it was, to uh, Graham Moss, be runner-up after missing most of the season, or the better part of the season, with a broken collarbone. That was just Knight's first mark so far in the match, but he's done a great spoiling job at centre-half back. There's a throw-in, half-forward flank for Hawthorne in the 22nd minute of this third term. A hand pass attempted by Alan Goad. In trouble is David Polkinghorne. Three North Melbourne defenders over the top, and umpire Smith rules that he tried to get rid of the ball with a punch. Courageously gave that decision earlier today with the player lying over top of the ball deemed to be in possession. Bernie Jones gets the tap away, taken by Malcolm Blight, who's been fairly quiet today. Scott underneath the ball, rising over the top was Daryl Sutton, and the interference against Sutton. Ooh. I don't know why, no. it was a legitimate attempt to mark. He certainly didn't impede Scott. Head and eyes on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So Don Scott, who's been obviously the bad man of the Hawthorne team to North Melbourne supporters, gets the pass in and finds Martello. See another missed kick there by a Hawthorne player. Luckily, it fell into the waiting arms of a Hawthorne teammate, but there were no North players there to counter the loose man. 22 minutes of play gone. Martello, a bomb for goal, and he's banged it through. Oh, what a great goal. That's really lifted Hawthorne. First goal for the turn at the 23-minute mark, and it gives them a 16-point advantage. 10-17-71 to North Melbourne, 8-7-55. And a badly needed goal by Hawthorne. Martello having a very good quarter. He's had about six kicks, I think, this quarter. And uh, that big bomb sort of certainly finished his quarter off for him. Well, certainly Brassie was able to whip something up out of these North Melbourne players today. He's always looking for something new to get them motivated. He's the best in the business at that, I'm sure. But John Kennedy's not far behind him. But what more can Barassi do at this stage to lift North Melbourne? 23 minutes gone in this uh, third term, a critical term. And Hawthorne taking the upper hand now. They're moving away from them as Feltham gets that ball and puts North well into attack. John Burns, great mark. Great mark. That was a really gutsy mark. He ran into three opponents. He knew the, re the results. But it's a push. Good effort, Jeff, by oh. the way. So he's going to take the kick. Just checking on that scoreboard, it's Hawthorne 10-17. They've kicked one for the quarter to North Melbourne's 8-7. And John Burns, only 15 metres out. He wouldn't be that, in fact. And he's a normally a straight kick, and he hasn't let us down, nor North Melbourne. It's gone through for number two. So it's 61 plays 77 now, a difference of 16 points. A couple of uh, mates there, and Burns looks as though he's really uh, out on his feet. He's taken a bit of a hammering as Crossball bucked him up there a little bit. And the uh, North Melbourne still living in the 1976 Grand Final. Yes, incredible. They, they've been getting beaten across the half forward line all while Sutton's given them life. They're beaten round the ground with their Ruck Rovers. And uh, up on the defence, uh, Moncrief and Henry are doing well. And all they're doing is hanging on at the moment. With, with, by a stroke of luck, that luck, if they're just 12 points down at three quarter time, I think they've got a big chance. Free kick against Don Scott to go to Nolan. We're 35 seconds off entering time on in the third quarter. Nolan with a big kick to centre half forward. Where are the leapers? Sutton at the back of the pack, knocked it loose. Beautifully read by Feltham. Hooks the ball around. Now it's up to Croswell, who got in front of Moore, but Moore read it well. Dropped the mark. Play on was the call, and it was taken by Bremner. Kicked down towards the member side. Cable running for it. He read it well, missed there by Ablett. Cable hooks it back into play. Up went to Sutton from the side, not to Mark. And uh, Kelvin Moore was swamped by three or four opponents. You can see there a reverse half Nelson headlocker. You could call that from Croswell. And it'll be a free kick to Michael Tuck, who emerges from the bottom of the pack after getting that free kick and earning it the hard way. On the member's side, back pocket. A long kick out of danger. Croswell gave him one for his trouble on the way past, which was spotted by umpire Della. No free kick down the field as it was Hendry's all the time. Ten. To half forward, tenth mark to Hendry, knocked on by Kelvin Matthews. He's lost it over the top when Gumbledon. Now it's up to Dawson. He's in trouble, but he steadies. Keeps the ball on the member's side. A bad pass. It was meant for Melrose. Chipping in was Lee Matthews. And lumbering after him, Nolan. Down towards the boundary line. Hit in towards the goal square now to Moncrief. But Gumbledon, right at the last moment, thumped it away from Moncrief and hit it through for a behind. Rush through, scores. Into time on in the third quarter now. 
Hawthorne 1018 78, North 9761. And Dench with a short pass into the centre of the ground looking for Feltham. He's in trouble, but he tapped it on cleverly. He was rolled to the ground, but still went for the ball. So did Sutton. This is Melrose, who's been reasonably quiet. Was well tackled. John Byrne gets it back to Sutton. Calling for it on the outer side was Croswell. It's in his direction. Moore in front. Couldn't mark Cable. Went to the bottom of that pack. Kicked off the ground. And it's through for Croswell. Brent Croswell. He's wrapped. And so are the North fans. And is this a comeback? Scores 78 to 67. And we're into time on. And Brent Croswell has already ruffled up a couple of opponents but put through a goal. Well, what could you say about that? A freak goal by Croswell. He's done everything right, wrong to this stage. And a kick out of the air. And it's a goal. And it could be the inspiration to lift North Melbourne. Into time on by a minute and a half. 26 and a half minutes gone in this term. Umpire Smith with the ball back in the centre, and there's another centre square infringement. And uh, the free kick goes North Melbourne's way. That means a Hawthorne player must have come over the line to add the fifth person into that uh, 45 metre square. Here's the kick forward by Nolan. North Melbourne now coming back at Hawthorne, the tight Hawthorne defence starting to crack just a little. Chance now for John Burns. On him is Peter Knights, and Knights sweeps the ball out of defence, but only momentarily, because here comes Feltham. Feltham aided by Greg. Twists and turns, goes towards the boundary. Good tackle by Doog, and the ball out of play. 78 to 67. In the closing moments of the third quarter of the VFL Grand Final. Big Bernie Jones gets his body in, knocked away by Terry Moore. No Stephen Nick it was, but a negative sort of punch. No North Melbourne Rover there to take it, and it's out of play again. Danger spot here for Hawthorne. About 40 metres out from the North Melbourne goal. Mark Dawson got the tap. In there is Doog again, number 11. 31 is Jones. Host of players over the top of the ball. And umpire Smith moves in for the bounce. Half forward flank. 28 minutes of play gone. North Melbourne with the chance, certainly now, to move back into this game with the aid of the breeze in the last quarter. They only trail by nine points. 67 to 78. Peter, uh, Peter Knights with the ball. Back towards centre field. Chance for Nolan. Lumbering behind the play. Ball loose, Graham Melrose catches one high, and he'll take the free kick. He'll play on quickly because the North forwards have a run on. A 15-metre penalty against Martello will halt play momentarily. Melrose will take the kick again. Rollins, the offender, then ran across the front as Melrose went to move. Jim Golden be handy now, David. Yes, 78 Hawthorne, North Melbourne 67. And North Melbourne have added three goals to Hawthorne's one. One goal, six, Hawthorne in this term. The high-flying Bremner, chance for a North Melbourne mark there to Sutton. It wasn't on, but danger again for Hawthorne as the hand pass comes out to John Burns, who'll snap. Oh, deflected beautifully by Kelvin Moore, and the ball off hands out of play. Barassi coming down for the three-quarter time address. 29 minutes of play gone. Here's the throw-in. Can North Melbourne convert? Brian Doob sends them back momentarily Chisnell tries for the mark umpire Smith close on hand the hand pass out of out of the uh, the pack and Barassi not it, impressed with that interpretation by umpire Smith because it was called a throw back towards David Dench centre wing sending North into attack again the pressure now on Hawthorne the hand pass back from Chisnell to Dench Dench towards centre half forward the hand pass on to Sutton and Sutton will steady and line up the goals he's fired it through that's Darrell Sutton's first goal no he's off line well, I don't know whether it was touched off the boot there because the crowd went up behind the goal. Sutton was convinced that it was a goal, but that would have been one that North Melbourne would uh, have been placed only three points behind. As it is now, it's ten points. North Melbourne are really fighting back, and how do they do it? They've been undermanned and outplayed, taken up there by Polkinghorne at this stage. Siren time after a great fight back by North Melbourne in this third quarter. A scoreboard check. Hawthorne are 10 goals, 18-78 to North Melbourne's 10 goals, 8-68. It's a 10-point difference at this stage, though you wouldn't think that so by the standard of play. Well, about 30 minutes of play left. John Kennedy, the great, who uh, was very humble in defeat last year, uh, down to uh, Ron Barassi, he said, well, maybe our time will be next year. Well, next year's on us today. And uh, who knows whether John Kennedy is going to be coach of Hawthorne whether or not they win this year's uh, grand final. He's been a, a tribute to the game. He's been in it for 20 years, a wonderful player as he played on the field and certainly a great coach and took Hawthorne to their very first two premierships, particularly their first one. Standing by for the last quarter of the VFL grand final. Here we go for the last 30 minutes. 
start of the last quarter of the 1976 VFL Grand Final. Hawthorne, 10 points in front, and the roars of 120,000 people from the free kick, from the boundary, or from the ball up at least. Nolan takes it away, down to Melrose to the forward line. Knocked away by Schimmelbush, he's appealing for the mark. Play on was the call. He runs back from the half forward line, goes out wide looking for Burns who's in the pocket. He went to the ground, no free kick. Running after the ball out there is Feltham and hot on his hammer is Polking Horn. Feltham lost it and then forced it over the boundary line on the outer half forward flank for a throw in. But North from that centre bounce were first into attack. 35 seconds of the last quarter gone and here's the throw in. Harry Cable in picture there has had only nine kicks. Last week he had in the vicinity of 25. Paul Feltham trying very hard. Cable's in there burrowing after the ball again. A dominant player last week, Cable. About 10 hand passes and 22 to 25 kicks, only nine today. Jones against Nolan. North Melbourne in the dark short, both with vertical stripes. Keith Gregg chasing after the ball. A negative passage of play. North Melbourne with the use of a sour easterly breeze towards the main scoreboard or Jollymont, uh, no, not the Jollymont, the city end of uh, the MCG. Dawson has the kick smothered. Tight defence by Hawthorne. Matthews pushed there by Sutton, but play allowed to go. Hawkinghorn gets the hand pass in the direction of, of Rollings, but interception there by Melrose. He gets the kick back, a negative sort of kick. Didn't travel very far, and Jones in there for one of his rare marks for the day. A hand pass. Doesn't go for the kick. Looking for Polkinghorn. Hawthorne bottling the game up over there on centre wing. Ablett, who was quiet in the third term, taken by Feltham. Back towards the goal square. Chance for Schimmelbush, but he shepherds the play by. Here's a chance for Croswell. Can he soccer the ball? Beautiful uh, defence there by Bremner as he chose to just uh, hammer the ball through with the fist. And Hawthorne now hold a nine-point lead. North Melbourne 10-9-69, Hawthorne 10-18-78. It's Kelvin Moore now to kick that ball well out of the play. The wind's pretty strong out there at the MCG and surging and fell right into the arms of Keith Gregg who was involved in a very solid bump and or knock in the first quarter but he's fought back and now that he's been playing on the wing he's giving North that drive they need. A beautiful kick from Gregg into the goal square but where the North Melbourne forwards is that great talented Peter Knight's threw himself right into the centre of that pack to take a very strong and telling mark. It's only his second mark, he took the first one in the third term, but he's been a great spoiler on the day, as have David O'Halloran and Ian Bremner and Brian Dooge. He's kick out towards Ede on the wing. He's been uh, the master of Chisnell today, but Chisnell got that kick away. Cable, he'll do something, quickly towards it Dawson. Dawson's half kick comes down towards the forward line. Dooge is in there again, thrashing away in that pack, not giving an inch and really putting on the fireworks as he bounces up like a rubber ball, drives that kick out to the wing, but the umpire's whistle's gone. The ball will come back and it will be balled up in about the half-forward line from North Melbourne. There's 10 points of difference. Hawthorne are 10-18, 9 points rather. North Melbourne are 10-9. Just under three minutes gone in the last quarter. Nolan trying to direct it down to Cable, but it'll be taken away. Polkinghorn overran it, then lost it. Chance for John Byrne and also for Goad, but Polkinghorn, an effective but awkward kick, a long one up there for the forward line. Out goes Dent, streaming out in front of the ball. He was retarded and got the free kick, and a bad piece of play by Kelvin Matthews, who made no effort to go for the ball, and uh, it was spotted. And that's the value of the two-umpire system, because Bill Della was about 10 metres away and saw it quite clearly. Now, Dench. Turns defence into attack. It's going to fall into the middle of the centre square. Nolan lumbering after it, trying to tap it on. Too fast for Cable. This is Scott. In went Sutton, but it was too late. The handball had already come out. Chisnell doing well against the two players and beat them both. Now streams down towards the uh, half-forward line, taken by Peter Knights. Ricochets off Melrose's back, straight to Bremner. And Bremner pushed in the back. Yes, he was, although he was very close to being over the line, but pushed before he went over, and it will take the free kick on the members' half-back flank. Four minutes gone into the last term and still Hawthorne by nine points. A big pack, it's knocked loose. Rollings was waiting for it beautifully. There's a pass on offer to Kelvin Matthews. Blight behind him, knocked it away. It's loose, this is Goad. Twisting, turning, dodging. Gave the ball to Kelvin Matthews across the wards. Brother Lee, is it? Yes, it is. He's twisting and turning also. Lines up the goals from 35 metres out. Dench on the line, a great pass. David Dench read it beautifully and Matthews with the left foot kick couldn't get the distance and here go North again my word you start to worry when they handball in defence but they're out of trouble this time Nolan second time the mark not paid and it's the Hawthorne small men taking advantage of it Deed gives it back to Rollings he's close to the line dodges twists turns still in possession two or three tackles applied no free kick he bounces up got the kick back in but went straight to Dawson Dawson was held without the ball and will get the free kick 
half-back line on the members' side. Hawthorne, 10-18. North, 10-9. Five minutes gone into the last quarter. Mark Dawson going for the kick down the members' stand flank. High fly there was O'Halloran. Behind the plate to back him up is Scott. Has the hand pass on offer to uh, Peter Knights, and Knights accepts it. High kick, put his forwards under pressure. We're waiting for it. In front was Ablett, knocked away from him by Greg. Cable is there, so is Cumberland. Cumberland's kick, when he's pushed, uh, is an ineffective one, and the mark taken by David Polkinghorn, who since half-time has played extremely well. A hand pass to Ian Bremner. Very tight defence. Hawthorne standing up to this North Melbourne pressure. Mark attempted there, one-hander by Lee Matthews, knocked forward for Hawthorne, but good defence by Malcolm Blight. This time twists and turns his way out of trouble and fires down towards Darrell Sutton, who tried the spectacular slips catch, couldn't take it. Bremner on top of the ball, umpire watching play very closely, but that great defence again by Hawthorne, good uh, team combination. Peter Knights up towards centre-half forward, the mark taken by Gary Cowden. Cowden centre-half back after six minutes of this final term, and Hawthorne holding a nine-point lead. Beautifully placed kick finds Barry Cable out on the flank, and there goes that dynamic handball of his right in the arms of Keith Gregg, and away go North Melbourne into an attacking mood across the centre half forward. Up goes Ick, and a beautiful catch there by Bremner. And the Hawks are giving nothing away. They're really on top of the situation. It's Knights that's taken that wonderful mark, and uh, he's getting better as the game goes along. Fine kick, great defenders kick out to the wing, but Keith Gregg's there to save the day for uh, North Melbourne. Wheeling round now, the handball across the top to Gumbledon. He's a bit slow and his three opponents there, but Gumbledon battling on. Slots that one out of the pack. Across to Felton, he's on the wettest part on the ground there. He'll have to take short steps to hold his footing into the centre-half forward position. And how can they beat this man? Peter Knights have took his first mark in the third quarter and since then he's taken three great marks in this, in this last term. The waiting on in the scoreboard, that 69 belongs to North Melbourne, the 78 belongs to Hawthorne, and the Hawks are really fighting it out. They mean to win this 76 grand final. Another 60 metre kick by Knights into a crowded area, punched away from the pack, taken by Melrose into the hands of uh, Byrne, across towards centre half forward, towards Sutton, knocked away by Knights or Dudes this time. Big foot at uh, the need at this stage as, uh, as he gets it, kicking it towards the half forward line, but it's North Melbourne this time. Quickly taken by uh, Dench. Gee can run with the ball. He's caught. Had to get rid of a wobbly handball. The crumbs are picked up by Tucker, who has time to steady and think. A long kick up to Hendry. He spilt it. Blight coming through, deflected it across. A time saver. Out of bounds. And North Melbourne live again. 10 9 North Melbourne. 10 18 Hawthorne. 10 about seven minutes are gone. Here's the boundary throw in, still on that half-forward line for Hawthorne. Martello tried to knock it back, but Cowton gave it down to Dawson, to the half-forward line. Bad bounce there for O'Halloran, but not for Rod Ede, who read it well. He drives it back, it's loose, a free kick against Dench. A free kick against David Dench, and you saw it for retarding Mike Moncrief. Oh, and that could be a very bad one. Moncrief has kicked two goals, three, but he is directly in front of goal and only 45 to 50 metres out. Bill Della was very close handy and watched that and Barassi on the phone again. The message I would think would be going straight out to David Dench. And let's watch Moncrief. He's lining up, taking plenty of time. He's kicked two goals. He's directly in front. He lines up with the drop punt. He's put it high into the air. He's put it straight through for a goal. The third goal to Michael Moncrief. 97 goals for the year. A wonderful performance. And while... All the hoo-haws have been made about Hawthorne. We forgot about Moncrief, but what a great performance. 97 for the year. Well, it's now 11-18, 84 to North, 10-9, 69. And we've played nine minutes into this last quarter. Hawthorne desperately hanging on and North desperately trying to get back into the match. This is umpire Della with the ball. There's the uh, telephone message coming down from Barassi again to uh, runner Laurie Dwyer former champion, McNolan, with the penalty in the centre. Meantime, put to put North Melbourne back into attack. Crowd of about 115,000, and Peter Knights for the fourth time in this quarter. Spectacular high marking. Undoubtedly one of the best marks in Australian football today. Peter Knights, back towards the members' stand flank. Underneath the ball is Lee Matthews, well shepherded for by Barry Rowlings, who just blocked the North Melbourne player out, and that was Graham Milrose. The kick by Matthews is close to the line, it's out and over on the full, and will be a penalty against Hawthorne. Taken by Malcolm Blight, yes, number 15 Blight, been fairly quiet, 
he and Cable, match winners last week, have uh, not really uh, inspired North Melbourne terribly much today. Daryl Sutton taking a nice mark at centre half forward, just short of centre half forward. He goes wide, looking for Croswell, who's making pace towards the outer flank. The hand pass coming back to Greg, and Greg will have time to steady. Has he anyone to fire for? He decides to go for the run himself, trying to do it all, and spears the pass in towards Feltham. Feltham not paid. Brian Doog, it should have been. Why wasn't that a penalty against the Hawthorne player anyway? And Barassi is obviously most upset. Most of the North Melbourne supporters are, that's certain. Nice mark taken by Alan Goad, just short of centre. Hawthorne leading 84 to 69 after 12 minutes of play last quarter. Oh, how long's kick up towards Moncrief? Back looking out with Dench. Dench looking for the free kick. This time, uh, tit for tat because he gave one away to Moncrief earlier. North Melbourne's delicate handball, desperate handball. Light across now towards Cowton, long striding across the centre, back towards centre half forward. No one's giving an inch as Tuck handballs it quickly across towards Ablett. Ablett's been quiet since the first half. A well placed kick up towards John Henry. Henry hasn't brought his goal kicking boot with him today. In fact, he's kicked one goal seven for the match, which is not a great performance, but it's a grand final and there's been plenty of pressure. 80 metres of a beautiful long kick, but the wind's got hold of it, dropping it short. Moncrief and Dench knock it through for a behind. At the 10-minute mark in the grand final of the last quarter to boot, it's Hawthorne. Scoring way to slow, 11-19 to North's 10-9. Now Dench goes again towards the outer side, 11 minutes gone. Out there is Ablett and also Martello. Running through strongly is Gumbledon, who's had one of his quiet days. Picks it up inside the boundary line. Goes back inboard and finds his skipper in Greg. Greg now... Changes pace and direction, boots down to centre half forward. Polkinghorn set himself for the mark and took it well. And Ross Henshaw is uh, running the boundary line in preparation to come onto the ground. We'll wait and see who does go off for North Melbourne. Terry Moore, who's been quiet, knocks the ball away. Maybe it's Moore to come off. It's loose. A chance for Scott as he streams away from the centre of the ground and puts a long one up. Waiting back there is Dawson. Dawson almost had the mark. It was knocked loose. Kelvin Matthews. He lines up from 25 metres out with a snapshot, and he has put it through for a goal. Second goal to Kelvin Matthews. Dawson had himself all set for the mark, couldn't take it. It was knocked loose. It could almost have been a free against Matthews. Henshaw standing next to the goal umpire, waiting to come onto the ground, and what a great goal to Hawthorne at this time. Yes, Hawthorne's starting to look very good now. Their defence is standing up to anything North can throw at them. Uh, North lacking marking power. Knights risking everything, flying for his marks as if he didn't have a short shoulder, and uh, they look they look, they look the goods at the moment, Hawthorne. 13 minutes gone into the last quarter. Back in the centre again, watching to see who comes off for Ross Henshaw to come out of the ground. Melrose, a skimming kick up towards the half-forward line to Daryl Sutton, and Sutton caught high, has the chance to score here from about 60 metres out. Waiting for leads. Croswell telling him to kick the ball down to the goal square. He ignored the lead by Croswell, who was most angry about it, but Sutton, a long kick of a ball, scored five goals, and two of them were monstrous kicks last week. Here's another long shot for goal, but just when he's needed, he's offline. Darrell Sutton, two behinds for the day. And Hawthorne holding a lead now of 22 points. 12-19, 91 to 10-10-70. That's uh, 21 points. Kelvin Moore, low kick. Back towards the centre. Got plenty of distance, though. Alan Goad has Ablett outside him, but dummies the hand pass to that player. Has a chance to line him up now. Does so. Good football by Goad. And nice team play by uh, Ablett, who has all the time in the world now to steady and fire Hawthorne back into attack. Who's there? Gary Cowton for North. And Cowton takes a saving mark. The hand pass to David Dench going past. And uh, Henshaw still standing on the boundary line waiting for a player to come off. Dench back towards centre wing. The mark tried there by uh, Schimmelbush. Didn't come off. And ooh, tough defence by Bremner. Sees that ball over the line again. Free kick to Schimmelbush though. <clears throat> and Schimmelbush takes it on the wing. And he's had a quiet day today because they've had a stopper on him. And Ian Bremner. Down the woods. Oh, Feltham got up high. Couldn't hang on to it, but Tuck waited down well. He's played a, a sensible game, Tuck, today. Trapped by Alan Goad. Good play. There goes a handball. I must say that Hawthorne's handball has equaled North today. A directed kick out there to the wrong player, giving Dawson a long chase after it. Out he goes. Coming out from his Moncrief. He's fumbled. Moncrief slipped in that front position. It's like a racehorse at the moment as he breaks away. Got a teammate alongside him. Long striding Dench. Gets to it. Couldn't hang on to it. Picked up quickly by Henshaw, who's on the ground now. Uh, Burns, Burns off. is off. 
That's uh, John Burns, a centre play into the centre. And John Burns, a very dejected man of having to miss out in the last moments of uh, a grand final, but he's put in pretty well. It's Peter Knights, or is it Brian Dooge, across to Mike Tuck. Hawthorne's turn now to break up North Melbourne's defence and a wild kick by Tuck rolling up towards that forward pocket. Easy striding Malcolm Bright picks up close to the ground, heads off in the other direction. Left boots that down towards Greg on the wing. Beautiful oh, mark. Great sandwich to him. It's knocked every breath of wind out of him. And Keith Gregg is hurt. Lee Matthews was there again running one way and Greg going the other. Oh, uh, that, was, that was a fair close, that one. They yep, were both going to the ball. Greg being so yeah. slightly built would have felt every inch of... Uh, of the weight of Lee Matthews there as he came in. That was a strong mark. Take nothing away from him. A great mark. And the second time that Greg uh, has been down, badly hurt for the match. But that was a fair one. I back you out there, Serge. And uh, North Melbourne in trouble because they have 19th and 20th on. It's uh, David, uh, David Monane. Is it Peter Monane? Peter Monane, 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 yes. Warming up for Hawthorne. The Hawthorne runner going across towards, looks to be the back pocket position. Moncrief. Maybe Moncrief could be going off. There's a mark in play and a good one to O'Halloran. O'Halloran plays on from centre-half back up. Cowton gets front position. Second, third time. He got a free kick anyway. If the mark hadn't have been paid, he goes on with handball. A little silly, but it will go to Gumbledon. Gumbledon feeds it on to Henshaw. Henshaw well placed it, but Knight's got there. Good play, Stephen Nick, as he knocked it on. Schimmelbush overran it. Bremner got to him. Hit it to the boundary line. Good play by Bremner. Should be a push in the back to Schimmelbush. And it's not, but it should have been against Bremner because the opposite one was played before off the ground Kelvin Matthews and on Peter Manane for Hawthorne time check 16 and a half minutes gone a handy lead 12 19 Hawthorne 10 10 north a chance now for Lee Matthews Lee Matthews up towards the half forward line as his brother Kelvin walks off the ground and there's a mark to Henry but a free kick to Malcolm Blight free kick to Blight on the half back line Kelvin coming off the ground and now Blight about to put north back into attack Hawthorne leading by 21 points after 17 minutes of this final term and holding on to this lead and possibly the 1976 BFL Grand Final. David O'Halloran towards centre half forward, out wide. Ablett, tons of pace, out sprinting uh, Paul Feltham and that's no mean feat because Feltham is pretty fast himself. And Ablett firing in towards the goal square, the chance from behind for uh, Scott but on the ground is Cowton, all trying for the hand pass, he was given plenty of latitude. Plenty of time to get rid of it. Look for Henshaw, but the boundary line too close. 17 and a half minutes of play. 21 points the margin. A huge crowd. Ideal conditions, MCG. Gumbledon gets the tap away. Where are the North Melbourne Rovers? Feltham comes in. So too does Ablett, though. Cable tried to smother. And the kick from uh, Ablett is high, wide and handsome. And there'll be a free kick North Melbourne's way because it was over the line on the full. Ross Henshaw with the ball. 18 minutes of play in the final turn. Henshaw just on the ground now. Hand pass to Mark Dawson, and Dawson along the outer flank. A very quiet crowd at this stage with the Hawthorne holding command. Matthews, not terribly popular with the North Melbourne fans. They thought that he treated uh, Keith Gregg unfairly once or twice today. Certainly on one occasion. There's a free kick this time for that man, John Hendry, who has kicked one goal eight. 17th kick. 17th kick coming up for Hendry. The kick, a long one putting pressure on the North Melbourne defence again. Moncrief, front position against Dench, knocked away from him and over the line and out of play. Coming up to 18 and a half minutes gone in this final term, Hawthorne's lead 21 points. And it's a good lead too. It means North Melbourne would need to kick four goals to win the game. And can they do it? I don't think they can now at, uh, at that time, which is running out for them. Uh, lucky mark maybe, maybe not. Don Scott played a... A game for Hawthorne today, not for himself, a game for Hawthorne. He's a rugged, nasty, abrasive character, but he's all Hawthorne. Taking plenty of time now at that half forward position. You go in, there's a lot of players up there. Martello, Jones, Martello there. Fell right into his arms. Unreal. And North Melbourne seem to have lost their poise. They've certainly lost their concentration, that approach, because Mar Martello virtually walked into that mark <laughs> the big fellow after his fifth mark he's no more than 25 meters out uh, he didn't really drive that kick through and uh, consequently he's kicked it behind but uh, nevertheless it's 22 points a lead now that Hawthorne have notched up and the time at the moment is what 20 minutes 20 minutes gone in this last quarter of the 76 grand final very handy lead of 22 points. Dench again to the outer side. In front is Jones. 
not going for the mark. No free kick paid. North still trying to gain possession. Bulldozing his way throughout their polking horn. Back to Hendry, who's in trouble. Shrugs the tackle off, lines up for his second goal from 40 metres out and puts it through. And that might be the sealer. Listen to the crowd. That might be the sealer. Two yes. goals to Hendry. Yes, that'll be the sealer. Here's the fellow who started him off in the first quarter, just disorganising the North Melbourne defence. And it's only fitting that he's... It's a likely seal of that one with, uh, at the 20-minute mark. They've got a very big lead now, Hawthorne. And uh, North Melbourne showing signs of tiredness. They're not concentrating on their tackling. Their handball is getting squared, and their game's starting to fall away. Light goes down onto the forward line. Maybe in a last-ditch effort, but it could be a last-ditch one. It could be too late. This is Melrose in the way O'Halloran. He lost the ball. Melrose on the bottom of the pack looking for the free kick. He'll be last man up, but umpire Bill Della will ball it up. It's at centre-half forward with North just into attack. Nolan leaning over Scott, who takes it away and loses it himself. Taken by Chisnell, a long one down. Kelvin Moore, Blight running the same way. It's loose. Croswell overran the ball, but the free kick will go to Kelvin Moore against Malcolm Blight for running it more in his efforts to take that mark. And so a Hawthorne free kick, and a timely one. It's deep in the last line of defence. The time now, 21 minutes gone. And Hawthorne, 13-20-98. A 28-point lead over North Melbourne, 10-10-70. Kelvin Moore along the grandstand side. Members stand side of the ground. Peter Knights went up, couldn't take the mark. Michael Tuck, the hand pass to Rodney Ede, who's played well today on his wing. Taking the points against Peter Chisnell. Cowton, the chance to take the mark. Oh, bad misunderstanding there with Ross Henshaw. And it's uh, certainly led Hawthorne in. This is Ede, who'll pop it over the heads. Oh, a bad kick by Ede. It's going right across towards the outer side. Keith Gregg leading in the race for the ball against Menane. The ball almost sneaks in for a behind. Certainly not a good kick by Ede who had uh, really vacant land to kick to. Still danger here for North Melbourne. The margin already 28 points. Gumbledon, Moncrief lurking behind the pack. He'll line up. North Melbourne defenders seemingly uninterested. And he's just off line. Yes, he is. 97 goals for Michael Moncrief this season. Three goals, four today to him. And uh, he certainly showed a lot of life around that full forward line. David Dench with the kickoff at the 22-minute mark, final term. 29 points the difference, Hawthorne's way. Extremely long kick. It lands almost at the centre of the ground. A shimmel bush rushes in, commits his body, and he's still battling it out. He breaks away and wins the ball well. Out towards a half-forward flank, Malcolm Blight behind play there. He couldn't make up the necessary ground as O'Halloran playing his first grand final and doing it in great style. Gets the handball to Knight, who puts it towards a half-forward line. Henry was knocked down in an attempt to get that ball. Here goes Big Martello with his yellow soles flashing and a half kick shot towards the full forward position, but North Melbourne have the best running at the moment. This Greg now in the back pocket gets it. Shoots that long handball out towards Dench. Dench onto his boot now, driving North Melbourne towards the wing. Cable, Melrose, but running through there is Polkinghorn, also a first grand final player. Not a good piece of handball. Back to Ablett. He turns, has a look, drives the ball towards centre half or to Hendry. Upset in midair. Picked up quickly now by Felton. Picked up beautifully. In desperation, he's finding it out as Jones kicks it from in the middle of the pack. It's going to land in the goal square, and it's bounced right across the front and hit the behind post. Phew. Bernie Jones has just scored a behind. It's funny how the percentages work out. Hawthorne have beaten North Melbourne on the four occasions they've played this year, and it looks as though they've got them today. That was strange. That hit the behind post. It could have almost been out of bounds, but now Dawson takes advantage of the short one. Goes out to Feltham again, who hasn't stopped trying today for North. Not a well-placed kick, and into the waiting arms of Rollings. And Hawthorne now, with so much spirit, sensing the grand final as theirs, are running all over the ground to cut off passes and make leads and moves of their own. Rollings, wide out on the outer wing position. It's still 100-70, to 70, a straight five-goal lead to the Hawks. Turning the tables on last year's 55-point loss to the same team. Bursting his way through, Hendry lost it, still has it, ran into a wall, couldn't get rid of it. A free kick for holding the ball, it's to go North's way and Feltham there again, doing a power of work from North in defence in the dying stages of this match. Barassi saying, kick it quickly. 24 and a half minutes gone, into the last term. Hawthorne, five goals in front. O'Halloran from behind. Could almost have been a mark to John Byrne in front, but perhaps the recruit of the year, this fellow, David O'Halloran, recruited locally from Ivanhoe Grammar, has had such a wonderful season for Hawthorne yeah, and has done the job expected of him beautifully this season and again today. And this is kick number 13. 
It's a long one too. Again into the scoring area for Feltham. Missed there by Count. Now Feltham tries to tackle. Hendry's 25 burrowing through. And uh, it's umpire Kevin Smith to bounce. 25 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. We're into time on now in this last quarter of the grand final. Extra time only and it's Cable out of the pack but in front out there is Douge. Douge was tripped anyway and got the free kick but had the mark safely in front of Blight. And Hawthorne players everywhere. Taking it out there is Ablett. Ablett has plenty of time now from the outer half forward flank to kick the ball long into the scoring area. Jeff Ablett, two behinds to his credit today. Coming up for his 18th kick and he's been one of uh, Hawthorne's match winners. Lands it right in the square with uh, John Henry there, number 25. Two goals, eight to him. Cable pushed to the ground, ridden to the ground by Lee Matthews and Barry Cable. Strangely quiet today. Now it's Cowton. The blonde hair of uh, Gary Cowton was uh, about all I could see there uh, be below Lee Matthews. So Gary Cowton at centre half back in towards the centre. Chance for Bremner off hands. Coming through as uh, Peter Knights. Been a good player for the Hawks today. Daryl Sutton runs into a, a real bone crusher from Ian Bremner who shrugs off a tackle and great defensive football by rough tough Ian Bremner. Nothing stands in his way. He's slowing play down too. 26 minutes of play gone, five goals the difference, 100 to 70. Before this huge crowd at the MCG, the chance for Martello to take the mark, pushes Terry Moore aside, Alan Goad is impeded and he'll take the free kick. North always second to the ball in these uh, last 10 minutes or so as uh, they probably sense defeat as much as Hawthorne sensed victory in the, the Cup and the Championship Cup that goes with the Premiership for 1976. Alan Goad driving in towards centre half forward, looking for Moncrief again. Mark dropped there by David Dench. North Melbourne making plenty of errors, obviously dispirited. Dench recovering well though this time and finds Keith Gregg. Gregg, half back flank, five goals the difference, 100 to 70. Good kick from Gregg. In towards Sutton. Got up high, couldn't take the ball with him. Tuck goes out the back door with an arm across the shoulder, up towards the forward line to go with a push in the back in any case. And uh, as you said, uh, David, that the Hawthorne players are certainly wasting time now, and not a bad tactic either because they've got the game wrapped up. North Melbourne's two only behinds in the final term were just not enough. And whatever they can do now would be a little too late as Go puts a long kick up towards full forward, taken by Cable. Cable boots it back towards the centre. Sutton will fly from behind, but the man in front must take it. And it's uh, O'Hallon again. Gee, what a great game this young fellow's played. His marking is good. His kicking is even better. His handball is great. He's the complete footballer. From the centre of the ground now, that long left foot kicks, coming around, spilling from the hands of the players. A good tackle goes on there, and Cable comes out with the goodies. A long kick straight down towards Malcolm Blight. Up he goes, and up he marks too. The handball away, and North Melbourne just... Silence gone. The Hawks have had revenge on last year. They've won the 76th Grand Final. The final scores as they're related. Barassi and Kennedy embrace each other. Two great sports. The final scores. Hawthorne have won 13-22. 100 exactly. North Melbourne, 10-10-70.